Specialist goes in motion from shotgun. Smith's got it. Deep step back. Now fires and a little underthrown. The reason they did this, I was talking to Hans Diemer, we want to catch this squad off a little bit of their tilt. They came in as the number one defense, and I think well-deserved. But you know what? I don't think they're ready for a scat-back type of quarterback and a guy that can throw it end zone to end zone. Yes, uh, Smith, very athletic. The intended receiver on that last pass, Andre Valasquez. And we know us last time he was at the quarterback position to get the Fairbanks Grizzlies, the arch rival. Remember that one pass right into the third quarter, dropped back, tiptoeing across the sideline, tossed it end zone to end zone. We might see some excitement right here at the Sullivan Arena on Mother's Day. Taylor and Valasquez are split out to the right side. Specialist in motion is Thomas Ford on the left. Smith from a deep shotgun fires, and it's got a man complete at the 15-yard line. Diving to about the 14-yard line, making the catch was Valasquez. Andre Velasquez, one of those guys that's one of the best receivers because he knows when to get in that zone and find the, I would say, the open spots. Keith Smith did a very good job buying some time for himself, stepping up in the pocket and firing a strike. Very close to the first down, bring up third and about four. Velasquez in motion to the left. Flags fly at the line of scrimmage. Ball is tipped and nearly intercepted at the goal line. Keith Smith trying to throw it in double coverage and nearly picking it off was Warren St. Junius down at the goal line. But again, a flag, actually two flags, one at the line of scrimmage, and then another flag sits back at the two-yard line. Flags have riddled the Alaska Wild this season, but it looks like it's going to be the Louisiana Swashbucklers as a lineman takes a little chat with the Zebras and see what's going to happen. Looks like they're going to mark it off and mark off a first down for the Alaska Wild. Just underway, no score. 13-04 here in the first quarter. And that's going to... Two penalties both on Louisiana, as you can hear the, maybe the official offsides and illegal contact. The Wild will take the illegal contact penalty and have it first and goal at the five-yard line. First and goal at the five-yard line. T. Smith from shotgun hands it off on the reverse play and nothing doing. Louisiana right there in on the play. Thomas Ford went in motion, handed it off to him, and Andre Velasquez just got beat on that balking opportunity, and Thomas Ford was thrown down the Sullivan Arena turf very quickly. Buck Harrison on the tackle for Louisiana. So they lose five yards. Ball sit down at the 10-yard line. Second and goal from the 10. Opening drive of the game as we welcome our live television audience viewing on Family Net Television. Kelly Thompson, Mark Drake, Bill the Human Computer with you on Mother's Day from the Sullivan Arena. Long chat this time with Hans Diemer and Keith Smith. And now uh, the Alaska Wild will take a timeout. So we'll break away as well our first timeout. 12-12 remaining first quarter. Boy, I bet we don't say this much tonight. No score. (laughs) We'll be back right after this. Victor Goy, owner of Goy Construction in the Valley, is offering affordable homes for all Alaskans. Drive out and see why our Rosemary model in Paradise Lake won the Matsu Home Builders Association 2007 Golden Spike Award. Custom or not, your family will appreciate the many upgrades we build into every home. Call Goy Construction in the Valley today at 373-3032. At Goy Construction, we can do it. If the little things are becoming a workout, call North Star Chiropractic Wellness Center at 33 Spine. That's 337-7463. Okay, second and goal from the 10-yard line. Under center this time, Smith drops back the pass, scrambles, and he's going to be sacked and dropped right at midfield at the 25-yard line. Good pursuit by the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Both sides just had that one gobbled up. Looked kind of like a screenplay because they were in within three or four seconds of the snap count. 
Boy, credit Buck Harris again with another tackle for the Swashbucklers. He's at a McNeese State. A lot of McNeese State's players on the Louisiana Swashbuckler squad. You look down at McNeese State is in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So a lot of these guys have played Pee Wee football, college football, and now professional football in the same place, in the same area, about 30 minutes away from New Orleans, Lake Charles area. Well, this is the opening drive of the game by either team. The Wild got it all the way down to the five where they had first and goal. They've went backward ever since. Here is Smith firing and it's underthrown. Nyan Taylor out there, the intended receiver, but uh, well underthrown by Smith. As again, they're putting some pressure on him, and now fourth down. Good job by Smith just to throw it out and away under a lot of pressure. You mentioned when we went into break about high, how high scoring this game has the maybe the makings to be. If you went on the IFL website and you voted which game in, in week number 11 will have the highest combined point total, 44% of you said Louisiana Swashbuckler game versus Alaska Wild. So obviously, outside looking in, this has the makings of a high-scoring affair. Well, Mac Pennington will try the 35-41 41-yard 41, 41 field goal attempt here. Nyan Taylor the hole. And it is blocked right at the line of scrimmage. Look out. And Louisiana will take over on offense in great field position at the Alaska Wild 18-yard line. Man, one thing with watching Louisiana warm up before the game, Mark, that is one team that can match, if not better, the size down along the line of scrimmage. They've got some big boys. Exactly right. I was talking to some of the linemen before the game for the Swashbucklers. They said they have to win in the Hogs category. They have to beat the guys in the front line. And right now the first stands up for the last while offensively. The defensive line for the Louisiana Swashbucklers got the best of the red and silver. All right. Louisiana will load up the shotgun. Alvin Barty is their quarterback. Takes it from shotgun. Quick throw complete out to the right and getting it down inside the 20 yard line. Sammy Knight on the catch, number 17. Big number 99, Mal Tozzi. And on the tackle, that one was on his defensive end position. Great job to spread out, find the intended receiver, and then gobble him up and throw him for a loss. So it'll be second down and 11. Barty, the quarterback, six foot, 235 pounds, right there in Lake Charles, Louisiana, home of the Swashbucklers. Oh, juggles and then just falls on top of the football as he juggled the shotgun snap. And he'll lose about five yards on the miscue. Third down and upcoming. Clock at nine minutes here in the first quarter, no score. And we've got our first media timeout, so we'll break away. Well, we'll say it again. What a surprise. Just underway, though, but Louisiana nothing, the Alaska Wild nothing. Back after these messages on the simulcast, 96.3 The Wolf and Family Net Television. For the last decade, Holland Roofing has had the privilege to offer quality products and quality workmanship to our many satisfied customers. Our priority is to do each job safely, efficiently, and of the highest quality. Our certified installers take pride in their work, and our professional staff provide excellent customer service. Call 344-9911 or visit our website for your free estimate, and you will see firsthand the Holland difference. Holland Roofing. Quality, safety, service you can count on. Welcome back. A quick pass by Barty to Kurt Duhon on the third down and long. Gives uh, Louisiana a first and goal. As 
Duhon stopped at the uh, six-yard line, just outside the six. Good just misdirection on that play. Trips to the left. He went back to the right side out of the run back, running back position. Duhon did a very good job setting up on that wall screen. Caught himself wide open. Nice little pickup. Louisiana Swashbuckle setting up first and goal. Sammy Knight, number 17, is the offensive specialist in motion. Flags fly, and uh, they hit the pass to Sammy Knight for a touchdown. But again, a flag on the play. Kind of came in the defensive backfield where sometimes you sense that that's a defensive penalty Mm -hmm. on that uh, linebacker that's supposed to be in the box at all times. And that's what the call is going to be. It's going to be on the Alaska Wild. So, obviously, the Swashbucklers will decline that and take the touchdown. Very good pass route by the Swashbucklers. Started on the left side, went all the way across. And when a guy has 4-5, 4-4 speed, it's tough to catch up to anybody. Caught it right in front of Demarcus James, picking up the touchdown. Move number 17, Sammy Knight, Louisiana Swashbucklers, picking up the TD. Sharif Zahir on the... Extra point, and it is good, making it 7 nothing Louisiana. I bet Sharif gets a lot of opportunities on extra points, as we told you, Louisiana. One game this year scored 89 points, and they've broken the 80 mark three times in their six victories. And the part of that is probably because of their defense, number one in the league. So almost you get to the point, if you get down on these guys, you're looking at a situation where you have to throw every single down. Last play, four plays, 18 yards. Time of possession, 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Louisiana Swashbucklers lead to the 7-0, 8-13 lead. Crowd's still coming in on a Sunday afternoon, Mother's Day. Beautiful day outside as it's been the last few days. But, a pretty uh, nice crowd. Yeah, I'm looking around. It's definitely more than what we had here on our last, last time we were here, and that was over 2,000. Tough year. draw, beautiful day, one, two, uh, Mother's Day, and on a Sunday, add that to boot. All right, so Sharif Zahir gets ready to kick it off. Louisiana arrived in Anchorage late last night, and they'll stay in Alaska for over a week. They venture up to Fairbanks. Talking to some of the Louisiana Squash Club's guys before the game. They were excited about seeing up here. Say we want to see two things, a bear and a moose. <laughs> I can see you seeing a moose. I can understand yeah. that, but you better go to the zoo to see a bear. You throw a bear in their bus. There's a good, high, deep, deep kick taken by James deep in the end zone. Returns across the 20, breaks the tackle, and is uh, brought down at the 20, at the 15-yard line. Ryan Garrison in on the tackle. These last couple of games. James had a little bit of trouble finding some open space. It looks like they've been doing a very good job flattening out and seeing what they can find. James is one of those guys, if he senses something, he's going to jig himself out and see if he can take it down to the house. But these last two games, he gets Odessa Roughnecks and then, of course, the Stampede Express. And now the Louisiana Swashbucklers, he hasn't been able to sniff out anything. And take a look at the size of that line for Louisiana. 91 is the nose guard, John Paul Jones, six foot three, 315 pounds. Okay, Smith from shotgun, no one's open, so he's going to scramble with it, takes it himself up the middle and gets some positive yards out of the play as he crosses the 20-yard line, stopped up against the boards at the 21. This is one of the reasons they wanted to keep Smith in this ball game against Louisiana Squash Brothers, because that front line is the best around. Right up there with Alaska Wild, you got Mal Tozzi, 6'5", 6'6". you got... Joe Small, that same kind of size, 6'4", 6'5". Now you look at Louisiana squash book, it's just a carbon copy of each other. But the squash book might be a little bit faster right off the tip of the ball, don't you feel, Kelly? They look like it so far this afternoon, I'll tell you that. Okay, Smith from shotgun. Velasquez uh, goes in motion. He's going deep downfield to the left. Smith tries to get him the ball, and it's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by Louisiana down around the goal line, and... Some fans maybe wanted a pass interference call as it's intercepted by Warren St. Junius, number 11. Keith Smith on that possession had about three or four step drop and then felt a lot of pressure and kind of heaved ho it to the end zone. And Velasquez could not come down with it. And it will turn over on downs, bringing it up first and ten for the Louisiana Swashbucklers as they lead 7-0. Well, that's uh, our first turnover of the game capitalized by Louisiana. 
That's the stat. Remember, the Alaska Wild is number one in the league. Turnover margin with a plus 20. Louisiana right behind them at a plus 15 in second place. Okay, deep in their own territory, Louisiana will start this drive. Alvin Barty under center, drops back, and is trying a soft little toss to Jabardi Hendricks, who makes a big target. He's their tight end, 6'4", 295 pounds from Michigan State. 295 is probably pretty generous. Hendricks is a big old bowler right there. And sitting up right in the middle, and James Griffin came in there, got a ball on it, went down the round to the Sullivan Arena turf with six minutes left in the first. Louisiana squash buck goes up 7-0. Second down and 10. Okay, Barty this time will go shotgun from his own end zone. Takes the snap. He's going to go deep down the middle of the field. No one is there except two defenders for the Alaska Wild, both Gentry and James. Back deep as uh, Louisiana got crossed up. Marcus Will- Willridge, number four, broke the other way. Barty thought he definitely was going down the middle, and Wildridge broke off to the left. James almost got a paw on that, and he leads the IFL in defensive stat leaders with eight interceptions coming into this ball game. right behind James Grissom, his teammate, with five iron teams himself. All right, Barty again, this time third down and ten. From shotgun, his own end zone, three receivers to the left. Short pass has got a man and held short of the first down. Quick pass out there to 15, Sean Piper. He's out of Louisiana Tech. And the Wild stop him at the nine. You're always going to see what the Alaska Wild are going to bring back after a turnover. I think they got a very good defensive stand right here for the Alaska Wild. Doing a very good job top to bottom. That front line's doing a very good job putting pressure on Barty. And also the defensive back crew is doing a very good job corralling those speed receivers. Movement at the line of scrimmage. You're hoping that's on the Alaska Wild. George Noga jumping off sides. It's fourth and about five or six. Now be fourth and short. Wow, it's going to be on the Alaska Wild. I don't think, though, that'll be enough to give them a first. We'll see. Referees look it over, and now they're going to be short by about two yards. George Noga, last year's IFL all-star, jumping off sides for the Alaska Wild. They're going to try to pick it up on the ground, and they don't do it. The Wild stop them at the line of scrimmage. Great play by the defensive end, Joe Small, George Nova right in the heart of it, Antonio Alicio, and in the backfield, Marcus James coming in there, knocking him silly. Turnover down for your Alaska Wild. Great defensive stand right there. Rudy Johnson was the ball carrier. That's Joe Small territory. He Ooh. just takes charge, doesn't he? Does a very good job. 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, just gobbling that up for the Alaska Wild, bringing up first and ten. A good opportunity to knock this game back up at seven. All right. Smith from Shotgun, Nyan Taylor, the offensive specialist in motion this time. And Smith's going to throw it out to the right. And good defensive play. Man, what a smack. Damian Huron, number two, really laid uh, Velasquez out. He was the intended receiver. And we've got a timeout on the on the field. Louisiana taking a timeout, so we will too. Quick break, 3.59 remaining in the first quarter. So far, it's low scoring, believe it or not. 7 nothing. Swashbucklers. Back after this. Have you taken your visitors to Denali? Have they seen a bear? I'll bet they've never had a reindeer omelet. Well, now there's one last place to see Gwynny's Old Alaskan Restaurant. At Gwynny's, enjoy our sizzling New York steak. Mm -hmm. Or how about Alaskan king crab? 
Gwenny's, where our portions are as big as our heart. Enjoy our friendly pub for an after-work refreshment or just to meet up with old friends. Gwenny's Old Alaskan Restaurant, a favorite Alaskan landmark for over 30 years. Come taste Alaska. Kelly Thompson, Mark Drake, Smith threw it outside to uh, Nyan Taylor for a short pickup. And the Wilds got it now down to the 8-yard line. Louisiana, one of the best defenses in the league, and they're even better, even stingier. Lead the league in red zone defense. I mean, they're not giving up anything. Doing right. a very good job here. Smith takes the snap from shotgun. Looks to his right. No one open. Tries to scramble. Then heaves the ball up in the air. I don't know if that's a fumble or not. Referees are treating it like a fumble. And fortunately, uh, the Wild recovers it. Tophy with the recovery right there for the Alaska Wild. Doing a very good job just pouncing on it. Making something out of nothing. The Alaska Wild bringing up fourth and very long. I don't know if they're going to bring the field goal crew back on or they're going to go for it again. It looks like Hans Diemer is choosing to go for it as Alaska Wild set up pretty much from midfield. Hans Diemer back at the controls. He wasn't in the unemployment line very long, was he? Well, when you're four and two and on the questionably the IFL coach of the year, why would you be? Okay, fourth down and goal. Smith from shotgun. Drops back again, facing some big time pressure. Scrambles, got Taylor. Complete at the 17. Tell you one thing, Keith Smith's done a great job buying time for himself because every single time you've seen a Louisiana swashbuckler jersey right in his face. That time, two or three defenders. He loses one, resets himself, and finds Nia Taylor out in the flats. Very short of a first down, but a nice little pickup for the Alaska Wild as the defense trots back on the field. Yeah, Louisiana was. They'll give up that pass play on fourth down. They just didn't want anything in the end zone. So here comes now Louisiana on their second offensive drive of the game. 2 10 remaining here in the first quarter. 7 0. Louisiana, glad to have you along on the Wolf 96.3 FM and Family Net Television. Quick pass and juggled and dropped out to the left. Marcus. Willridge, the intended receiver, couldn't hold on. James Griffin, a very good coverage on that one. Pass was a little bit low, but James Griffin was screaming down from his defensive back position. Heard footsteps, and that's why it went down to the Sullivan turf. Offense coming in, Louisiana Swashbuck for 74.5. Pretty impressive coming into this matchup here on Mother's Day. Yeah, and 288 yards a game. Oh, bad snap here. Loose football, and the Wilds recovered it. Mal Cozy, all 285 pounds of no, no, it wasn't Mal who comes up from the bottom of the pile. It's George Noga. George Noga did a very good job on that one. I thought it was Mal myself, Kelly. Mal was over the top, kind of screaming down, jumped a little bit, but George Noga, the IFL all-star, the Hawaiian product coming down and pounced on that, bringing up first and ten. And back to best possessions for the last while, the defense, second in the league, Gets number one defense in the league. Louisiana Swashbucklers have got the best of them, not the Kelly. They have. Okay, Taylor split out to the right. Keith Smith is now a wide receiver. E.J. Nemeth, the quarterback, and juggles his first snap, and all he can do is just fall on top of it. Well, we heard about this before the game. There was a strong possibility of just some uh, switching at quarterback uh, throughout the game. Why not platooning, and they do it right here. Why not? Nemeth had a, had a whale of a game. I thought get some Stampede Express. First half of the ball game, a little bit slow, but second half I thought he was solid as solid could be. Nemeth has played against Louisiana once already this year when he was a member of San Angelo. Okay, he's got time. Fires. Ball tipped up in the air and nearly intercepted. That was tipped by Travis Moses. Man, Man that's Steve. secondary. I. I can see why Louisiana's number one in defense, Mark. You mentioned it, but man, they are, their defensive backs are athletic and quick, and it, we haven't seen anybody no. that, with that much athleticism, that at least who we've seen play the Wild so far this year. As we've seen a couple times, it seems like they drop almost a two back or a Tampa two, and they let that front thing, and it's kind of a zone defense, it looks like, and says, hey, your quarterback just better beat you. Well, that's going to be the end of the first quarter. Our score, Louisiana, the league champion, seven. 
in the Alaska Wild Nothing second quarter action coming up next on the simulcast. 96.3 FM The Wolf, Alaska's untamed radio and family net television. Alaskan made superior logs, simple yet superior. Superior logs homes are designed to your specifications and bolt together in hours. We've been manufacturing Alaskan made pre cut log packages for homes, cabins, and businesses since 1983, and we provide log siding too. In Anchorage, call 345 3323 for more information and view more pictures online at www.superiorlogs.com. Alaskan made superior logs, simple yet superior. If you haven't been to the Radio Espresso drive through and Cafe, you're missing out. A warm, relaxing environment where you can enjoy time with your friends and your favorite espresso drink. We select only the finest coffee beans and serve quality, handcrafted beverages and pastries. Our service is prompt yet friendly and personalized, delivered in a genuine, enthusiastic and caring way. Experience coffee in a new way at the Radio Espresso drive through and Cafe on the corner of Northern Lights and Boniface. Kelly Thompson, Mark Drake, welcome back as we get ready to start the second quarter. Key play here for the Alaska Wilds. Third down. Ball sits at the 16-yard line. E.J. Nimitz back at the helm for the Alaska Wild. They need about 13 yards for a first. Quick pass over to Nyland Taylor. He's got it. Works his way up to the 10. Gain of about 5. But it'll leave him about 8 yards short of the 4th. First down with fourth down coming. What we saw a couple of weeks ago by the Alaska Wild, you not I take a look at Nyan Taylor, the catch, the pitch and catch from EJ Neiman, is that they started out in a running game for the Alaska Wild. I think they vacated into this go around. They might go back to it right here, and they're having trouble capitalizing here with some red zone opportunity. Fourth and long for the Alaska Wild. Taylor, the offensive specialist in motion from shotgun. Neiman steps up, fires, and it's going to go in row one of the bleachers. And the fan even missed it. Neiman did a very good job buying himself to them, stepping up in the pocket, lofting it over the defensive back's head, and just a little bit long for Keith Smith. And out of the end zone, and oh, you got to catch yes, those. I know. You come to the game, you got it, and you're on the front row, you got to catch those. He did get it, though. Eventually went underneath the bleachers and got that one. Looking at the stats for the Alaska Wild. Boy, Wild, minus 21. That, a lot of that, I think most of that was on that huge sack when Smith got sacked back at the midfield mark. Passing yards, moving against Washington for 37 compared to AK Wild, 25. All right, Barty from shotgun. He's facing some pressure, and he's got to throw it away. He's got to make that ball a souvenir for the crowd. Very good job by George Nogan, the nose guard. And now Tozy, the left defensive end, coming off the ends and knocking Barchi right in his face and throwing him around to the Sullivan Arena turf, bringing up second and long to Louisiana Swashbucklers. Okay, Barty, this time a lineup under center. Second down and 10 from their own 11-yard line. Three receivers out to the right, and it's just a quick pass out to the right. And a short game, maybe a pickup of about four yards. Henry Hunter, number 18, making his first catch of the game. Barty at one step drop and throwing it out to the wide out on the right side. They're trying to get a scheme, a screen play, trying to set up something, to get it in space. But James Griffin was there to throw him down to the Soul Marina turf. His second tackle this ball game. Well, they've scored over 83 times, but Alaska Wild held them to seven so far. Seven nothing, Louisiana. Two minutes gone by. Second quarter. Flags fly at the line of scrimmage, and here's Barty's pass underthrown. That's a coverage sack by the Alaska Wild, doing a very good job in the secondary. Demarcus James, James Griffin, Jawan Gentry. And then Dewani Delaney also back in there, doing a very good job sitting there waiting, waiting, waiting. And sitting there, it's a coverage sack, but I think the flag will be on Alaska Wild. Ooh. Yeah, you're right. Legal procedure, that's one of the three yard penalties. But it moves the stick about 
six yards short of the first down. So third down upcoming for Louisiana. But it gives the Louisiana Swashbucks the opportunity to maybe even run this play. See if they get something up the middle with only about third and five. Okay, Barty from shotgun. Two receivers left. Takes the snap. Three-step drop from shotgun. Fires deep and long. has got a man. Touchdown. Sammy Knight on the TD. Sammy Knight doing a very good job. Starting on the right side, almost like a banana cut and a banana route. Finding himself wide open in the end zone. Demarcus James. Barty under pressure. Tosses it in the end zone. And a strike. Demarcus James just couldn't catch up to Sammy Knight. You don't hear that very much. Boy. About Demarcus James not being able to catch up to anybody. Barty's got a rocket for an arm. Did you see him launch under, that? Under duress, too. George Noga coming off the end of Mount Tozzi. Sharif on for the extra point and converts. And Louisiana takes a two-score lead, 14 to nothing, with 12.36 remaining here in the first half. You see why they can put up 74.5 points a game, because they can score, and they can score in a very quick minute. Barty's one of those guys that's pretty big size, so if you take a couple hits, he did a very good job on that possession for the Louisiana Swashbucklers to sit there and take it, take it to the pop in the chops, and then toss it and strike in the end zone to Sammy Knight, his second of the night. What do you think it was like to prepare for this game for the Alaska Wild this week with all the turmoil going on in the front office? If you viewers or listeners don't understand what came on, you had a, a change of ownership and also a, a moment, almost a week off for Hans Diemer because he was fired by David Weatherholt. So all that going on, it has to be tough to concentrate on maybe the biggest game in IFL history, at least in Alaska Wild history, going up against Louisiana Swashbuckers, number one versus number three in the league. It had to be tough, because when you're talking about coming into this situation, these guys are focused, focused, focused. When you talk about all the things that are away from the focus, you're talking about a new head coach maybe, a new ownership. You might even not have a game this Sunday. So it had to be very distracting. I don't even know how they even competed and how they even came to get their mindset coming into this matchup on Mother's Day. Do you, Kelly? No, but they uh, understand everyone came to practice through it all. And- They've had two weeks to prepare for the league champions, but with all this going on. Okay, kick is picked up by DeMarcus James, and DeMarcus fights his way out to the 20-yard line. Also kudos to Abe Hernandez, the assistant coach for the last while. Why Hans Diemer was gone, Abe was running offense and defense and almost doing his GM roles as well. So he had a lot on his plate and did a very good job just getting this game going on Sunday. Okay, A.J. Nemus stays in at quarterback. This will be his second drive. The Wild will start at their own 20-yard line, trailing 14 to nothing. So far, Louisiana's done an outstanding job of shutting down our offense, our offensive weapons. Taylor, Thomas Ford hasn't touched the ball. Nemeth with Taylor in motion. Fires, and here we go. Finally, Thomas Ford with the catch and gets a huge block. Boy, T. Smith. Put a heck of a block on his man and able to get forward an extra five yards thanks to the block by Smith. He Smith all cracking back on that one, taking another look at that one. Smith did a very good job buying himself some time and just right in the head of losing a swashbuckler. Just kind of a little pop. Thomas Ford picking up five or six more on that possession. That's the first first down for the Alaska Wild so far. This afternoon, wow, is that a telling stat. Thanks, Bill. Nemeth from shotgun. He's got a man caught. Oh, and he paid for it, but holding on to it was Keith Smith. And he gets up. He's okay. Hey, part, <laughs> part of the game to knock me into the boards, I understand, but I caught the ball. Give credit to EJ Nemeth doing a very good job threading the needle. Just give an opportunity that looked like Keith Smith caught it and then trapped him against the boards. Account paid with that catch. First and goal, Wild, just inside the 10. Nemeth, three receivers to the right. Fires and overthrow. And Nemeth took a big hit too, Mark, after he let loose of the ball, and he gets up 
with a little bit of a limp to his right ankle. B.J. Namath, a pretty big guy, 6'5", 6'6", and pushing 290, almost three bills. And when he gets hit, he's going to feel it. He gingerly rolls back to the huddle for the Alaska Wild. Look at that line for Louisiana, the defensive line. Or the Alaska Wild Cheerleaders, Kelly. Nose guard 91 is John Paul Jones. He's 315 pounds. Here's Neiman Paul Kip looking for Keith Smith and Nyan Taylor. They were both in the end zone. I think it went off of Smith's hands for a moment and then fell in the end zone incomplete. Good play call there by Hans Diemer. By himself some time and just in and out of the hands of the tenant receiver and fell down to the soldier of turf. Nyan Taylor there, Keith Smith there. Good opportunity for both of them to come down with the first score for the Alaska Wild. As we sit 14 to 0 at 9:39 in the second. Third down. Nemeth from shotgun tells Keith Smith to back up a little bit, and Smith goes in motion, fires way over the head of Nyan Taylor. Might have slipped out of Nemeth's hands on that release. Another souvenir for a. A young fan this time. This ball was just way too high. If Nyan Taylor's 10 feet tall, he can't catch that one. Exactly right. Just a little bit. I think you're right, Kelly. I think it did slip out of his hand. Throwing over there, 10 is receiver. Timeout on the field. We'll quickly break away as well. Exactly nine minutes remaining. First half. Louisiana 14, Alaska Wild nothing. 96.3 FM, the Wolf and Family Net Television. We'll be right back. Are you looking for wholesome reading materials for you and your family? Do you need unique and encouraging gift ideas? Located on the Palmer Wasilla Highway by beautiful Wasilla Lake, Shalom, Christian Books, and Gifts offers a wide range of inspirational books and gift items. Come visit us for the Bibles and books you know us for and discover our selection of artwork, DVDs, clothing, candles, music, life of faith dolls, and books, individual and box cards, and more. We hope to see you soon at Shalom. Dr. Jerry Prevo invites you to the Anchorage Baptist Temple Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. to celebrate Baby Dedication Day. You don't have to be a member to have your baby dedicated, so bring your baby age one year and under to the Anchorage Baptist Temple Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. Every baby dedicated will receive a special gift from Dr. Jerry Prevo. That's Baby Dedication Day, Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. at the Anchorage Baptist Temple, 6401 East Northern Lights. Phone 333-6535 for more information. Nemeth back to pass and just gets rid of it as he was facing big time pressure from John Paul Jones and his 315 pounds. Nemeth just had a chuck it and a lucky fan in the along the sidelines able to catch that one. But another drive stopped and the Alaska Wild held scoreless thus far. That's the bad news. The good news is Louisiana, they're hauling. High octane offense has just been held to 14 points here in the first half. Okay, Louisiana will take over again. Crowd chance defense. Party from shotgun takes the snap, drops back, fires the pass from his own two's got a man. Marcus Wildridge breaks the tackle and breaks it into Alaska Wild territory before he's finally stopped down around the 17 yard line. on that one for the Lasco Wild was there a very good job slipping around it but I think it's going to be called back look like holding on Sammy Knight but I could be wrong Kelly what'd you see I didn't notice the flag till just now it was Dewan Gentry who finally stopped Wildridge pushed him up against the boards down around the 17 yard line now it's going to be on the Wild as you can here and see it's a face mask on the Alaska Wild. That's one thing that's bothered the, the Wild this year, Mark, has been penalties. Yeah, exactly. All year long they've been trouble with them, especially those first three or four games. I mean, it was pretty bad. They led the league in penalties, and that's not a good stat to be leading in at all. Okay, Louisiana, they'll pack on a little bit more on the face mask, so they'll have it. 
at the six-yard line, first and goal. Barty kneels down under center. This time it's a handoff. And going to about the five, this is Kurt DeHaan, running back number seven on the carry. Him and Griffin getting into a little shoving and shouting match afterwards. Joe Small was in on that, and James Griffin, extra quick exchange. Duhon's one of those guys for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Played his high school ball in Lake Charles, and they didn't bother to go to college. He was, he was offered to McNeese State and a couple other schools, but said, heck, I'm going to be Louisiana Swashbuckler, and I'm going to play some pro ball right here in my home city. Two receivers left, one to the right for Louisiana. Barty under center again. Fakes the handoff on the reverse, then fires a pass. Complete Wildridge touchdown. Very good play calling there for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Two misdirection plays, and then he turned around and fired a strike for the third touchdown of the game for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. In and out, they have to have a score here for the Alaska Wild to stay in this ball game where they sit down three scores down. Wildridge out of the University of Louisiana at Lafayette with the catch, and he, James Griffin just couldn't quite get there in time. Another extra point attempt by Sharif Zahir. And, man, he's not only good, he's been perfect. Boy, that ball's been right square in the middle of the up, upright on his three extra points. Now makes it 21 to nothing. Louisiana over the Alaska Wild with 7-13. Remaining here in the first half. Mark Drake has uh, left our broadcast position upstairs, and you're you're downstairs. Where exactly are you at? I can't find you right now. Well, down here in the corner, Kelly. And oh, I see Some it. of these crowds, they've kind of been sitting on their hands a little bit. Haven't been anything going. Haven't had lots to cheer about. And it's exactly right. 21-0. Goose eggs on the board for the Alaska Wild. And that, kind of that is that defense. We talked about how good the Alaska Wild defense was. Well, the Louisiana Swashbuckler is living up to the building as well. Number one coming in, and they might leave number one when they when they leave the AK Wild Sullivan Arena and also when they go up to Fairbanks. Looking pretty solid early on, Kelly. Don't you love the indoor football league? I mean, you can do color commentary literally on the field. On the field. You're literally on the field in the end zone. Well, you know, I mean, Kelly, we don't want to show your age, but it's a news in technology. You know how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> What are you, 52 the, years well, young? Well, the, the purest, though, I'm talking about the purest of uh, having a reporter on the field during a game. <laughs> but, yeah, you got a great vantage point. See if you can maybe hold one of the Louisiana players on the kickoff return. How about that? What are you going to do on this kickoff return? <laughs> hmm? What are you going to do on this kickoff return? Do my job. He said, do my job. Um, he said, yeah. let me kick. Talking to Henry Hunter. I, I said, hold him, not interview him. Hold him back. <laughs> All right, good kick. And it's uh, taken by James. I beg your pardon, this is Gentry number three, not number two. And he gets it across the 15 to the 16-yard line. Dwan Gentry did a very good job finding some space. Jiggled a little bit, but couldn't find an extra little three or four yards. Upended, thrown down to the sole of the turf. And I tell you one thing, this is do or die time for the last Wild as they sit down 21-0. to zero. They get a 7 on the board right now. It makes a little shift in the ball game. Also makes this a little bit better of an issue for the last Wild coming into halftime. 7.06 left, 20 on, the, uh, 20 on the game clock. We'll see what happens. If they get a score here, Kelly, I think it's a change in the whole shift of the thing for the last Wild. We talked about them have to get a good start for the last Wild. They haven't done this yet, at least on the offensive end of things. Defensively, they've been solid. Mark, they're 6 of 16 passing for 52 yards. Nemeth at quarterback, going deep, Scott Smith, touchdown! <laughs> Keith Smith! <laughs> quarterback to quarterback. And that brought alive, alive the crowd. Nemeth, Mark, man, he just unloaded it. And then Smith pulled away as he beat his man and caught it in the end zone. Very good job pitch and catch combo. I swear, he Smith only had about two or three yards on the defensive back, but made a very good catch under duress, tiptoeing inside the end zone, and putting up six for the Alaska Wild. 
Mac Pennington is the Alaska Wild kicker. And it's up and it is good. So the Alaska Wild, it took a while, but they're on the scoreboard. 21 to 7 now with 642 remaining in the second quarter. That's the halfway point of the season, believe it or not, Mark. And the Alaska Wild just has two more home games after this. And five of the games remaining uh, are on road games. So seven more games, two at home and five on the road. But two of those five, of course, up in Fairbanks. Well, Kelly Thompson, I'm with E.J. Nemeth, quarterback. Quarterback to quarterback on that pitch and catch combo. A strike. What was that play call? Uh, that was just a play I can pass uh, Schmidt out there. I thought they'd come up from what I saw. You know, we hit them deep on that. Before I go any further, happy birthday, Mom. <laughs> watch it. But I, I thought that would be there, so I wanted to give it a shot. Well, that was a birthday connection right there and a birthday connection with your quarterback, too. Keith Smith, talking about coming into this game, looks like your ginger is coming in and your knee problem or something like that. they got a good front line for Louisiana Swashbucklers. How tough is it out there right now? They're tough, but, I mean, I, I played against tough teams, so... Uh, it ain't, it ain't nothing. It's just football. So my guys are blocking. My uh, receivers will catch. My fullback will block too. And you know we just play football. Obviously the big catch, pitch and catch combo bringing the score to 21 to seven. Kelly. All right, Charles McRae on the return for the last for Louisiana as he takes it up to the 20 yard line. And Louisiana will take over there. Well, the second half of that connection, Keith Smith, you were quarterback at the start of the game. Now you're a receiver. You made him pay. And after the touchdown, there's a little chipping going on there, wasn't there? Yeah, uh, it's just, you know, me and the guys, we, we got a lot of time together. So, you know, anytime I do something, it's going to be chipping it. So just get ready for it. Exactly right. You're going to keep this football. He's got it in his hand right now. He says, I'm going to remember this one. You going to remember this one? Oh, this one. I can't get this to nobody. I can't get this to mom. Yeah, I'm keeping this one. It's Mother's Day, though. It's Mother's Day, so she got to have this one. Exactly right. Kelly, back up to you. Marty going deep and nearly intercepted. Nearly juggled by DeMarcus James. The intended receivers were Marcus Wildridge. He broke in. And James was reading the pass and nearly picked it off. First time Barty has missed his receiver. In and out of the hands on that one. James had an opportunity to get his ninth INT of the season, but I'm sure he'll get one more. Holding on the offensive line for Louisiana Swashbucklers, bringing up second and long. Swashbucklers, we talked about their defensive line, and their offensive line is mammoth as well. Barty drops the snap, takes it himself, now heaves it to Wildridge, and Wildridge makes the catch and even takes some yardage after the catch. Down around the 25. Interesting where they're going to mark this one, Kelly. we got two officials negotiating this. James Griffin had him on the thing. Like, I think they had a knee problem, but then there's another flag on that one. I think it's going to go against the Louisiana Swashbucklers for arguing it after the play. Yeah, they're, they're, this play ended up, as you can see, right along the, the bench of the Swashbucklers. And, man, they were giving the referee an earful of something. Uh, so they're going to call on sportsmen like on both teams which doesn't accomplish anything Dunn Sportsman with, with the Louisiana Swashbucklers on the bench they're talking in the official's ear that's where they pick up the unsportsman like the Louisiana Swashbucklers okay well the ball will be set down at the 23 yard line we'll call it Second down and about six for a first down. 21-7, Louisiana. Barty back to pass from his hind foot. Launches it into the crowd, literally in the corner of the end zone. Good coverage. Both uh, Griffin and James back on double coverage of Marcus Wildridge. J.C. Hobley off the end and Mal Tozzi off the end getting the hole and Barty was in trouble. Did a very good job just to throw that one away. I don't know what Barty's numbers are, but it's not up to par where he's been at the whole season. This defensive line back and forth with these hands. Swashbuckers been good and, of course, the last while has been dominant as well. We hit the five-minute mark. 
left to go here in the first half. Barty under center. And there's a little snap might have been uh, inadvertent. And it's going to be on Louisiana, the penalty. And it'll remain third down. Alaska Wild teammates and coaches scream the same thing. Watch the crossing route here. Sammy Knight already has two touchdowns on this one as he spreads to the right. Watch him to see if he can streak from the starting from the right side all the way to the left side so he can find himself being open. They're well aware that as James Griffin sets back into Marcus James. Third down and nine. Barty gets rid of it and overthrows his man. Exactly right there, Kelly. Crossing route and Joe Small just laid that licking on Barty. His second time, he's been rushing that passer, Joe Small, from that defensive end position. His tackles are up to two or three this point in the ball game, but one right now. He's been dominating that defensive end position of the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Alvin Barty, Mark, uh, 17 passes, seven completions for 87 yards. He comes in as the third best quarterback in the IFL completion rating right now, and he's way under his usual mark. All right, we're going to have a timeout. Timeout on the field. We'll break away as well. 3.58 remaining in the first half. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Glad to have you along on 96.3 The Wolf and Family Net Television. 21-7 Louisiana. The doctor told us we had a 1% chance of conceiving naturally. We tried a couple of uh, infertility treatments and went through our first month and nothing happened. Went through our second month, nothing happened. And one Saturday night we were sitting at home and the phone rang. It was a friend of ours. He just said, there's a girl in my youth ministry who is pregnant. She wants to give her baby up for adoption and I can't get you guys out of my mind. The nurse turned to Emily and said, who do you want to hold him? And she said, Leslie. So they put him in my arms for the first time. As they put him in my arms, I was just looking at him thinking, you're so lucky you don't have my genes. <laughs> What's amazing is um, he doesn't look anything like me. And when people will go, he looks just like his daddy. Well, Jake is now four. Almost five. Almost five. We knew we'd like being parents. I didn't realize how much he would make me laugh. And I can't uh, imagine loving a child anymore just because he is from your own flesh. Kelly Thompson, Mark Drake, welcome back to the Sullivan Arena. Wait, referees need to check their watches down on the field. They take a media timeout, and it's only like 15 seconds long. But why the uh, swashbucklers try to a long field goal, and it's real close. Just very, very close on that one, Kelly. Everybody in the Alaska Wild bench was holding their breath. They all thought it was good. Just a bit short, bringing up first and ten for the Alaska Wild. See the uh, passing stats. Alaska Wild 7 of 17 for 87 yards. Louisiana now 9 of 18 for 106. Okay, Nemeth stays in at quarterback from shotgun. Fires. Got a man complete. Out to Thomas Ford. Boy, they're doing a good job, aren't they, Mark, of uh, double. There was two guys on Thomas Ford. No wonder we haven't had a chance to say his name that much this afternoon. He's been well covered. Yeah, Thomas Ford hasn't been the usual scat back as he usually do, getting a couple rushes and a couple passes. But right there, he did a very good job finding some space, making the catch, and keeping close to the sidelines, almost stopping that clock, bringing up first and ten for the Alaska Wild. Nemeth will send uh, Smith and Taylor out to the right. Takes the snap, facing pressure, rolls out. Can he get rid of it? Yes, just barely. To avoid the sack, he threw it out in the stands, and he gets up complaining that off of a face mask or a late hit that he wants the official to call, but no flags on the field. E.J. Nemeth did a very good job eluding the tackle and then just throwing it away. The whole coaching staff was, throw it, throw it, throw it, and he did a very good job at the last minute just tossing it away. 
bringing up second and long for the Alaska Wild. Clock running to 30 now remaining in the first half. I thought we'd have like 48 to 42 score at halftime. I think everybody in the crowd did as well, but I'll tell you one thing, this has been our best ball game we've seen here at the Sullivan Arena. Usually by this time, the, the game's usually already gone and out of the hands of the opposing team. And obviously this one's a back and forth affair sitting now at 21 to 7 with 2.10 left in the second. Wide receiver sweep on that last play, not the that much there for Ford. Eddie White brought him down. Twenty-one seven Louisiana. Remember they came in undefeated, six and oh no one's even played them close. They have literally just blown out their opponents so far this year. They're the defending league champion. Here's Neiman. Oh man, maybe his own man knocked him down as he was in shotgun. And Poppy, I think, actually bumped into him. Yeah, Antonio Lelicio got a little bumped on the corner right there. And the white, the defensive end for Louisiana Swashbucklers, just puts him right into E.J. Nemeth. And Nemeth just went down to the Sullivan Arena turf. The Alaska Wild set up for a field goal. The East High product will dash out, see if he can put three on the board. You know, this is our second year of doing these games. That's one thing that we haven't seen. Do you recall a long field goal? Maybe we can right here. Remember, the field is 25 yards at 10 for the end zone. And uh, so this will be 25-20. It'll be a 30-yarder. Got the one-minute warning, Kelly. Yeah. One-minute warning. So why don't we just keep it right here? Barring uh, an official 30-second break. I don't trust their watches. Well, Kelly, at halftime, we're going to have the new owner for the last while, Dr. Randy Dieter. Doctor in the local area. Obviously, yeah. it's a breath of fresh air to a lot of these players when they're on the verge of strike just last, just um, two Fridays ago. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, he owned a part of the team before, right? Like 15%. And now he's the majority owner of the Alaska Wild. Yeah, he came in last year, and of course this year, over 15% of the team. Now he's just multiplied his stat and everything. I don't know what the official money was, but it was a nice little hefty fund he dished over for the Alaska Wild ownership. And he's excited about this squad, and I talked to him a couple of times. He's just a generous man and a good guy, and all, this, all the players seem to really enjoy his presence right here on the field. He sits right next to the players at every game Yeah, I, on the sidelines. I, he loves the team. He loves the sport. I remember you talked to him, I think, uh, last year at, at halftime during one of our games. And yeah, I did, Kelly. He's just one of those guys that wants to be around this team as much as possible. Now he's going to be 24-7 as much as he wants to be. And we'll have him right here at halftime. Also right before the trot over in the halftime speech, we'll have Hans Diemer. As he sits right now, 21-7 down with 59 ticks left in the second. Pretty good tail, a pretty good half for both teams. I think Louisiana Swashbucklers had their moments, as did the Alaska Wild offense and defense. Well, if Pennington makes this, it'll be a 55 yard field goal. We talked a couple of times of these opportunities. Field goals almost act like a punt position for the Alaska Wild. As deep back for Louisiana Swashbucklers sets and waits. And the East High product, Pennington. Waits the kick as Nyan Taylor sets up for the hold. Watch out, Sammy Knight. We know how fast he is for Louisiana. He's standing back in the end zone, awaiting a return on Pennington's field goal attempt. Okay, here we go. Sammy Knight already has two touchdowns on the night. See if he can get four on this one. It's going to be way short, at least 10 yards short. Knight... Takes the field goal attempt at the goal line and got a block. Look out. Springing down the sideline. One man to beat. And he beats him. Touchdown. Louisiana. On that play, Louisiana did a very good job setting up a wall on the sidelines. And boy, by the two or three steps into that one, you knew exactly what was going to happen. Set it up right in the middle. To the left side, Sammy Knight was just gone. Maybe touched once and it was over to the end zone. Adding to the lead for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Man, he got a huge block by one of his teammates back at the 20-yard line. And it was just the 
not the kicker, but the holder, Nyan Taylor, was the only man standing back for Alaska to try to stop him. And Knight threw a wicked move on him. And it was funny because all the Alaska Wild players were saying the same thing. Wall right, wall right, and exactly what, exactly what happened. Sammy Knight scampered in for his third touchdown of this evening. Timeout's going to be taken by the Alaska Wild here with 45 seconds remaining. I think they were just a man. They were, I think they were a man short. As James Griffin, Demarcus James trot back on the field, I think they were two or three men short, actually, Kelly. Never what you want to see, but a disappointing stanza there for the last while as they were going to come in with a little bit of momentum after that pitch and catch combo between EJ Nemeth and Keith Smith. 27-7 our score. Waiting to the Louisiana Swashbucklers extra point. Mark Drake's down on the uh, sidelines and we'll... Uh, Remember, we'll have the interview with the new owner, but also catch uh, an interview with uh, the coach, uh, Hans Diemer, on the way to the uh, the locker room as well. Okay, ready for the extra point. By Sharif Zahir. Zahir looking a little perfect again. Four for four in the night. If he can strut this one through as Antonio Alicio jumps off sides, and there'll be a flag right off the bat. And they'll just immediately decline it. Louisiana. I don't like getting any closer on extra point. Yeah. Not only is he perfect, but watch how. If there was like a mark right down the middle of the goalpost, he would hit it. And he hits this one. Well, we can see why they're 6-0, and can't you, Mark? Yeah, I can really see that. I mean, the offense, they're solid. And defense, I don't know who's better. I mean, it's kind of a toss-up right now, but you look at the scoreboard, you got to go to Louisiana Squashback, or defensively, as the Alaska Wild giving up 28 points. But, man, it, I'll tell you one thing. This defense is big and fast. And I'll tell you one, Sammy Knight is a special player for the Louisiana Squashbuckers. He can. He has a couple little speedster steps, does a very good job bouncing in and outside, and if he gets a little bit of space, Kelly, he's back to the house very quickly. Taking a look around, you've seen all the games at home so far this year, Mark. It looks to me like this is the biggest crowd we've had all year long here. Surprising. I mean, one, Mother's Day, two, a Sunday, and three, it's such a beautiful day outside. So, I, obviously, you got to give kudos to Sean Washington and the whole crew of the Alaska Wild to setting this game up to getting all these people in here. Gave away up towards a thousand tickets to the local community. So obviously they're reaping the benefits tonight here at the Sullivan Arena by having a nice little crowd on Mother's Day. And I, I would bring my mother to this if she was around in this Anchorage area. So it would be nice to do that kind of thing. Kelly, obviously it's a great opportunity. Take your mother out after brunch and say, hey, let's go see a watch the wild place of football. Yeah, I saw a lot of families, a lot of families here children here today. Here's uh, Sharif's kick. Wow. Actually, after he's had some booming monster kickoffs, this one way off and in fact goes out of bounds. So, Oscar Wilde will take it right at midfield. Well, Zaire's been perfect on extra points, but been having a little bit of trouble on that kickoff right there. That wouldn't even close. 20 or 30 feet out of bounds, bringing up first and 10 for Alaska Wilde with 45 ticks left in the second. the wild they started the game with Keith Smith he he worked a couple of series now Nemeth has been in there for about so I think is his fourth series that he's been at the helm okay see if the wild can carry a little momentum get a little on the scoreboard here before halftime oh, oh it's a snap to Tony Lelucio I think that was a design play Lelucio the fullback took the snap a Louisiana was not fooled at all. Ryan Garrison, number 58. Interesting play call down. there, Kelly, because obviously you're gonna, if you're going to take it on the ground, you're going to have that momentum going and also the clock going as it ticks down under 30 seconds. This time they snap it back to Nemeth. He's got an open man out there, Nyan Taylor, who makes the catch and gets it just inside the 20-yard line, stopped at the 19. 
Clock stopped with 21 seconds remaining here in the first half. Look for right here, that same kind of thing, a play-action pass, maybe to Key Smith. See if they get that combo they got early in the second. See if EJ, can, EJ Nemeth can fake off to Antonio Alicio and see if they can get something deep as Nia Taylor trots up. Head referee had signaled for the clock operator to start the clock, which he wasn't supposed to, and then realized he made a mistake. And now resets the clock to what it should be, 22 seconds. Okay, Nemeth from shotgun. Uh, looks to his right. No one open. Now, Friars. Oh, rock. Ouch. T. Smith should have had it. And if anybody in the building knows, it's Keith. He already has the, the one touchdown catch here today. This almost could have been touchdown catch number two. There was no one around him. Exactly right. I mean, he, if he had that one, he had six as well. He in and out of the hands, down to the silver of the turf. But if he caught that one, he had about 20 or 30 feet anywhere close to the defensive backs, Louisiana Swashbuckler. He started on the right side and just came underneath and was wide open. Here's the pass, uh, again looking to Smith, and he juggles it, and incomplete. Thomas Ford looking like, wow, how can I, how is that juggled? There's no doubt about that one. In and out of the hands and thrown down to the Silverina turf. Bringing up another opportunity for the Louisiana Swashbuckers to take over on downs. Wow, so watch out. Well, just when we thought LA Alaska Wild might be able to get a touchdown, carry a little momentum into the locker room, hold it. There's still 14 seconds left. Louisiana takes over on downs and with this high octane offense, I'm I'm biting my nails up here, Mark. I'm nervous. Exactly right, Kelly. And you watch right here, you gotta go look for one person, one person only. Far T to Sammy Knight. He's already got three touchdowns, two receiving and one brought back to the house on a kickoff return. So anytime he can touch the ball, they're gonna look for him right now. Three receivers to the left. Oh bad snap in the shotgun, but picking it up is Barty, and he's able to complete the pass out to his man. Got it out there to 15, Sean Piper with the catch. Barty did a very good job finding himself some time and turned around and tossing it, and it was a strike to Piper, and Piper went down the Silverina turf, not for a nice little pickup. Something out of nothing for Barty there. Right as it's six seconds left in the first half of play. That wasn't a bad snap as I watch it on the replay with our television audience. He just kind of dropped it after the snap. And Barty, very fortunate, he got a he got a lucky bounce. Yeah, Barty has been holding that hand all night long. Seems like he's having thumb issues. Every single time he throws it, you'll see him gra- grasping at it, grasping at it, and trying to find something. Maybe he's having trouble holding on to the ball or something of that nature, but that pass right there is showing otherwise. All right, first and they got it at the 21-yard line. Time running down, launches it in the end zone, and right up against the end zone, nearly caught the intended receiver, Rudy Johnson. And Sean Piper back there. But a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Clock has got 0.6 seconds on it. Now Tozzi started on the right side and came right into the face of Barty, but there'll be a legal defense call on the Alaska Wild. And there'll be a timeout and another opportunity losing as Swashbuck was to add to this 28-7 lead with .6 seconds left in the first half. So moves Louisiana a little closer. Obviously, they got time for one play here. With this point six seconds, look for, well, Zaire's trots on to him. Yeah, Looks like they're going to go for a little extra, uh, field goal to action here. Oh, Why not? He's perfect from extra points. Oh, yeah. So watch out. This will be a 35-yard field goal. Sharif Zaire. Good. And two flags fly again. I don't think there was any doubt on what the flag is going to be. Zaire kicked it up and good. And Joe Small came off the corner and just lit Zaire up, threw him down to the Silver Marina turf as 
as Joe Small screams and pleads for something. He ain't going to find it. But it will be denied. So, officials probably love this. The game ends, the first half ends on a penalty. But uh, not a good first half for the Alaska Wild. They can see why Louisiana is the uh, defending league champions. Hans Diemer, let's, uh, he's with quick word with the coach before he heads to the locker room. Well, Mark Drake alongside Hans Diemer. Hans, one of those things, back and forth game, having trouble putting on the points on the board, and they came in as the number one defense. They're living up to the billing. Yeah, well, I think we dropped more than they made us drop. That's for <laughs> sure. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're going here, we'll regroup like we always do and come out uh, ready to fight in the second half. What are you going to make weeks? What are you going to talk about? Uh, catching the football. <laughs> one person that did catch the ball, Keith Smith. Yeah. Are you going to have him back as quarterback in the start, or what are you going to do? Keep with E.J. Nemeth. Uh well, I'm not sure. We're going to go in there and adjust. Uh, probably going to keep Keith at receiver. Obviously, they can't guard him. You know, we, we, we're a couple of catches from being a lot closer than we are, so we're, we're all right. Well, good luck in the second part of the game. Kelly, back up to you from a, well, interested head coach. All right. Thanks, Mark. Halftime activities uh, right around the corner from the Sullivan Arena on a special Mother's Day edition of Alaska Wild Football. Halftime score, Louisiana 31, Alaska Wild 7. How long's our break here, Kelly? Three minutes. For the last decade, Holland Roofing has had the privilege to offer quality products and quality workmanship to our many satisfied customers. Our priority is to do each job safely, efficiently, and of the highest quality. Our certified installers take pride in their work, and our professional staff provide excellent customer service. Call 344-9911 or visit our website for your free estimate and you will see firsthand the Holland difference. Holland Roofing. Quality, safety, service you can count on. I, I think it's just been a lifelong dream of mine to be a, uh, a police officer. It gives you an opportunity to do things that are fun and also help out the community you live in as well. I wanted to become a police officer uh, primarily because I enjoy helping people. And a police officer, you get to use a lot of those different skills and a lot of those different interests. Are you looking for wholesome reading materials for you and your family? Do you need unique and encouraging gift ideas? Located on the Palmer Wasilla Highway by beautiful Wasilla Lake, Shalom Christian Books and Gifts offers a wide range of inspirational books and gift items. Come visit us for the Bibles and books you know us for and discover our selection of artwork, DVDs, clothing, candles, music, life of faith dolls and books, individual and box cards, and more. We hope to see you soon at Shalom. It's smashing. It's catchy. It'll steal your heart. Anchorage Glacier Pilots with 50 games in 53 days. Summer 2008 is sure to be a real hit. Check the schedule on GlacierPilots.com and run from home to Mulcahy Stadium. Best in the nation is five-time collegiate champions of the National Baseball Congress. Games and prizes for kids between every inning. Anchorage Glacier Pilots, the greatest show on dirt. Victor Goy, owner of Goy Construction in the Valley, is offering affordable homes for all Alaskans. Drive out and see why our Rosemary model in Paradise Lake won the Matsu Home Builders Association 2007 Golden Spike Award. Custom or not, your family will appreciate the many upgrades we build into every home. Call Goy Construction in the Valley today at 373-3032. At Goy Construction, we can do it. Back to Alaska Wild football. 31 to 7 right now. Swashbucklers in control of this one. New ball game here in the second half, of course, but new ownership here right next to us. Dr. Randy Dieter, first off, congratulations. New owner of Alaska Wild. 
how'd this all come about? I know there was issues um, two Fridays ago about strike on the verge, all the players discontent with the owner, and you come up to bat and the new owner. Well, I mean, basically what it is is that the new owner or the old owner was looking for a new owner to buy him out. There was a lot of negotiations that had to take place, but I think it was a very positive thing all the way through. It uh, gives us an opportunity to take things one step further. Uh, you know, it was it was hard to get everything together to go for this week to come up as a fast and furious week, but I think it's a, it's a plus plus for everybody and creates the and it lasts a while but all together. And you've been around this last year and this year. You're over 15% of the ownership of the team. So you know a little bit about this organization. What's going to be in your, um, your, your benefit to coming on board? Uh, well, my whole thing is that, you know, this is, this is a hands-on organization. I love my players. I love the boys. I've always done it. You know, I mean, we can sit down and talk together. We can play play together. We can cry together. One thing we do, we we have a, the heart for this town to take this wild, to, to be, compete with the best. As you're well aware of, the, this team that came in here is the best in the league right now. But I'm sure that when they leave here today, they'll 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 know that we are Alaska Wild. Well, your first the first thing you did is bring Hans Diemer back on board. Fired by David Weatherholt, now he's brought back on board. What's he bring to the table on that stability? Is that what you're looking for as a 4-2 squad? Yeah, I mean, uh, Hans helped recruit these guys. Uh, they came here to play for him. Uh, he, he's the one that's taken them to this 4-2 coming in today's game. He's the one that can guide them through this. Uh, you know, I've got all the faith in the world in, in Hans. I mean, he's... He went out looking for these guys, and he's not going to let them down, and they're not going to let him down. Exactly right. And you sit there right on the sidelines. Why do you sit there besides being mingled with the crowd? You've done that all your time here when you came in as 15% owner of the last for a while, and they always, the guys seem to like that. Why do you sit there so close to them? Uh, it, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm part of the team. They're part, they're, I'm, I'm in there with them. You know, uh, I look in their eyes. They look in my eyes. They give me everything that they can. Did not, and even before I was the owner, I mean, these guys, they just they accept me and I accept them and we play together. That's the way it is. It's a hands-on organization. Well, with all the ownership changes and everything like that, will there be any changes in the GM positions, anything like that in the near future? Uh, what we're looking to do is just keep everybody where, what they're doing and do it right and just move forward. Uh, you know, everybody works their guts out trying to get this thing off the ground and that's what we're going to keep doing well the halftime entertainment will go on thank you so much dr randy Dieter, new owner of alaska wild and obviously changes in the air we're hoping changes in the air in the near future 31 to 7 alaska wild down we'll have more in stats and highlights right after this the Radio Espresso drive through and Cafe, you're missing out. A warm, relaxing environment where you can enjoy time with your friends and your favorite espresso drink. We select only the finest coffee beans and serve quality, handcrafted beverages and pastries. Our service is prompt yet friendly and personalized. Delivered in a genuine, enthusiastic and caring way. Don't worry about anything right now. coffee in a new way at the Radio Espresso drive through and Cafe on the corner of Northern Lights and Boniface. You know, taking your pets for a walk is a great way to stay in shape. Walking little Dudley Stewart Snail here, DS Snail for short, keeps me fit as a fiddle. You know, I used to have a greyhound named GCI Cable Motor. I came fast, just like the real GCI Internet of the same name. But DS Snail is as slow as DSL in January. Well, boy, I think we almost went three feet there. Whew, I'm pooped. Speaking of which...
Dr. Jerry Prevo invites you to the Anchorage Baptist Temple Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. to celebrate Baby Dedication Day. You don't have to be a member to have your baby dedicated, so bring your baby age one year and under to the Anchorage Baptist Temple Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. Every baby dedicated will receive a special gift from Dr. Jerry Prevo. That's Baby Dedication Day, Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. at the Anchorage Baptist Temple, 6401 East Northern Lights. Phone 333-6535 for more information. This is not what smart travelers do. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but this is... Go to thrifty.com. Compare our cars. Compare our rates. We're not scared. Because we put our lowest rates out there every day. Thrifty.com. Book smart. Welcome back to the Sullivan Arena. Halftime, Louisiana 31. The Swashbucklers and Alaska Wild 7. Simulcast with 96.3 FM, The Wolf. Alaska's untamed radio and family net television. Highlights of the first half. Obviously, four touchdowns. That was the first for Louisiana. Sammy Knight on the catch. And uh, Alvin Barty. Boy, he showed he just had a rocket for an arm on his second touchdown uh, pass play to guess who? Sammy Knight. Knight is just so, so fast. And uh, Marty also can just gun it. That that was uh, Marcus Wildridge catching his first touchdown pass of the, the game. And uh, the Wild was able to get one touchdown in. It was E.J. Nemeth uh, firing to uh, the guy who started at quarterback today but uh, was beating his man, Keith Smith. And uh, beat his man there for the one Alaska Wild touchdown. But uh, maybe I think the, the biggest highlight of the game was Sammy Knight's return of the field goal attempt by the Alaska Wild as he took it all 50 yards, caught it around the goal line, and made some incredible moves. And I think it really changed the ball game, the complexion of the ball game. Alaska Wilder on a streak right there, coming off a big touchdown. And all of a sudden, Sammy Knight gets a corner and gets a nice little six and puts this score up to 31-7. to Nobody's rushing the football, obviously. Alaska Wild negative 24 yards, most of that on a sack on T. Smith. Just two attempts, really, by Louisiana. They're a passing team. You can see they have 130 yards in the air. I think the big thing with that is I think the defensive line for the Alaska Wild and for the Louisiana Swashbucklers are the best around. I mean, there's penetration on every single play. It's tough to get anything rushing going when you don't neutralize that front line on both sides of the ball. Turnovers, three on the Wild. Three and uh, four on Louisiana. Alaska Wild actually, Mark, ran three more plays, 27 to 24, a number of plays that the Wild ran over Louisiana. All right, we'll take a break, uh, come back with more halftime activities on uh, Mother's Day from the uh, Sullivan Arena. Had quite the uh, dog show here at halftime for the fans. 31 sevens our score. More halftime activities continue on Family Net Television and The Wolf. Alaskan made superior logs, simple yet superior. Superior logs homes are designed to your specifications and bolt together in hours. We've been manufacturing Alaskan made pre-cut log packages for homes, cabins and businesses since 1983 and we provide log siding too. In Anchorage, call 345-3323 for more information and view more pictures online at www.superiorlogs.com. Alaskan made superior logs, simple yet superior. If you haven't been to the Radio Espresso drive-thru and cafe, you're missing out. 
a warm, relaxing environment where you can enjoy time with your friends and your favorite espresso drink. We select only the finest coffee beans and serve quality, handcrafted beverages and pastries. Our service is prompt yet friendly and personalized, delivered in a genuine, enthusiastic, and caring way. Experience coffee in a new way at the Radio Espresso drive through and Cafe on the corner of Northern Lights and Boniface. It's smashing. It's catchy. It'll steal your heart. Anchorage Glacier Pilots with 50 games in 53 days. Summer 2008 is sure to be a real hit. Check the schedule on GlacierPilots.com that will run from home to Mulcahy Stadium. Best in the nation is five-time collegiate champions of the National Baseball Congress. Games and prizes for kids between every inning. Anchorage Glacier Pilots, the greatest show on dirt. Honey, we're going to be late for your appointment. Oh, here comes my favorite word again. What? We're going to be late. Hurry. We're going to the lake with Murray? Fishing? The words you sometimes need most to hear are the ones that go unheard due to hearing loss. Get that corrected today with Hearing Outreach. We are locally owned and ready to serve you with new and rebuilt hearing aids at reasonable prices. Give us a call today at 522-7540. Honey, wasn't the Hearing Outreach appointment a great idea? No, heavens to murgatory, little bell is fantastic. I can hear you clear as can be. Truth is, when in doubt, read the instructions. When in doubt, when in doubt, when in doubt, when in doubt, read the instructions. I read it every day. Get the answers for yourself. When in doubt, read the instructions. Read the Bible. Find the answers for yourself. Read the Bible. This message brought to you by the New King James Version of the Bible and KAFC. Not a typical 9 to 5 job. You have to be prepared for almost anything and expect the unexpected. Actually, I stopped this vehicle. It's wanted in the connection with armed robberies. ABD-3, send me a backup. Stop, APD! The last of while starting lineup is brought to you by the Anchorage Police Department. All right, welcome back to the Sullivan Arena, the Alaska Wild cheerleaders. Are we doing a routine here at halftime? Louisiana 31 and the Alaska Wild 7. Louisiana, remember, they came in averaging 74.5 points a game and have scored over 80 three times. So really holding them to 31 points is a darn good job by the... Uh, by the defense for the Alaska Wilds. And put some pressure on Albie Barty, their quarterback, quite a few times. Yeah, coming into this ball game, we talked about the Alaska Wild had to get off to a good start. I don't think they really did that. They were very slow early on. Keith Smith had trouble. E.J. Nemeth had trouble. Leading to this nice little leap. Louisiana Swashbuck was 31-7. to But overall, top to bottom, if the, looking at this score, you know it's a tale of two halves. Alaska Wild come in as one of those squads that's always deadly in the third quarter. Put up the most points in the league in the third. So if they can get things going in here in the third, we can have a different ball game. And you know they can get up and things. Losing as swashbucklers, well, they lived up to the billing, especially defensively, Kelly. They did. And uh, they, they, they just impressed me with their size. Their quickness, their quickness at the skill positions, of course. But how about that size? Of their three down linemen, both on the offense and defensive sides. I mean, I, they're, they're like over 300 pounds, those uh, three men that line up on both offense and defense for Louisiana. Exactly right, And I think the defense and offensive line have been the tale of the story. I, I mean, the tale of this whole first half for the Alaska Wild and for Louisiana Swashbucklers. At times, I think Keith Smith or E.J. Nemeth didn't have time to breathe pretty much, and they were just swimming out there trying to find somewhere to go with the ball. Now I think Alaska Wild sitting out over a little bit, and I think that's partly of all the distractions off the field for the Alaska Wild. And I think this is going to be a different half for the Alaska Wild coming against this undefeated and number one team in the IFL, the Louisiana Swashbucklers. All right, getting set for the start of the second half. Next broadcast for our radio audience is uh, all the Alaska live road games carried live on 96.3 FM, The Wolf. Alaska's untamed radio is next coming Saturday night from 
Odessa, Texas. Game time at 5 o'clock, Alaska time. So mark your calendar, May 17th is the wild goal on the road for the next two consecutive Saturdays. They're against the Rough Riders in Odessa on May 17th. Then they take on Centex, Central Texas, on May 24th. Our next radio television broadcast on the simulcast will be at home in the Sullivan Arena on May 29th as the Wild entertains Corpus Christi, May 29th, in the next home game for the Alaska Wild after today. That's a Thursday night, by the way. Obviously, the schedule is pro Alaska Wild. You have four times against the Fairbanks Grizzlies, the worst team in the IFL. Got to like your schedule coming in. Last year, I mean, I think the IFL needs a little payback to the Alaska Wild after that month-long break they had for coming back to the Sullivan Arena last year in the first year in IFL history. Okay, the Wild will kick it off. And Louisiana will receive and work left to right on your radio dial. After the captains have a brief discussion with the officials. Well, very important, don't you think, Mark Drake, for the Wild to hold them here on this first offensive drive and then uh, take charge on the offensive end with their first drive. Well, we're back here with on the sideline with Barty, one of the main reasons why this 31-7 to lead for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. They came in as the number one offense. You're kind of living up to the billing, but you've been hit a lot tonight. Uh, it's going to be some nights like that. I, I was prepared for this defense. I heard, I heard they had a good defense, so... This half, we got to come out of the scoring machine like our offense regularly is doing. We'll open up. We're going to put it away this half. Keith Smith on the other side of the ball game started as the quarterback. Started out there. Got a nice little pitch and catch combo. Did you talk to him a little bit? Yeah, I talked to him before the game. He told me he was ready. I just laughed, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how it is. Good old friend. Huh? Exactly right. Kelly, back up to you. All right. I'll be Barty, the quarterback for Louisiana with Mark Drake. Well, they sure don't lack confidence, do they, Louisiana? Pennington to kick it off. Kirk Duhon back deep is, and Charles McCray. Surprisingly, but fortunately, maybe for the Alaska Wild, Sammy Knight, who returned the field goal, he's not back returning kickoffs which tells you maybe these guys are even faster than him. It's going to be Duhon. Oh, look out, 15. Stumbles and lost the football and maybe fumbled. Let's see who has it. Fumbled football to 22, and then Alaska Wild recovers. Picked up with it, but big number 45, Curtis Morrow, looks like he has that one. Bring up first and ten for the last wild. All right. He couldn't ask for a better beginning to start the second half than that for the wild. And Kel, we both talked about how important the start of the game was. Well, now they have to have a very good start for the second half. Okay, E.J. Nemeth at quarterback. Thomas Ford goes in motion to the left. Oh, bad snap. Nemeth kneels down and goes down. Oh, Sacked and dropped back at the 16-yard line. Good start and then bad start right off the bat. E.J. Nemeth, a little bit of a low snap, but then just kind of pounced on it. Couldn't come up with it. Bringing up second and very long, almost an eternity for the Alaska Wild after that big fumble recovery on the kick return. Two guys, Buck Harris, man, we've said his name a lot on the defensive end, 32. He plays a defensive end for Louisiana. Harris got one of those motors. Never stops on any play. Neiman from shotgun. Short pass off to the left. and Thought he might break a tackle, but he did make the completion and get it into Louisiana territory at the 24-yard line. Good call on the long official right there. The sideline official doing a very good job because he was out of bounds and against the dasher boards. Well, the play is called dead if you're on the dasher boards. And right there, Thomas Ford had a chance at it. Just tapped the dashboard board, and that was playing dead. Okay, big play here for the Wild. We get underway here in the second half. They're faced with third down, and they need about 13 for a first. 
Now in movement at the line of scrimmage. Boy, John Paul Jones, all 315 pounds of him, was coming right up the middle. Louisiana Swashbuckers come in averaging on penalties, 55 penalties, 55 yards on penalties. So that's not a good stat for Louisiana Swashbuckers. They sit at 6th. Blast Wild sit at 8th. They had trouble the first two games, averaging 66. So with the penalty now, the Wild faced with 10 yards to pick up the first. Remember, it's third down. Nemeth from shotgun. Smith in motion. Wants to go to Smith. Fires. Got him. Touchdown. Like we saw in the th- second, we see in the third. Very good job. Pass route right there. Got off the bump. P. Smith with a little bit of banana cut. Finding the end zone and finding the kick skin for his second touchdown of the night. 13 to 31. Blasco Wild still behind, but creeping back in this ball game. 23 yard touchdown pass from Nima to Smith. It was just a simple post pattern. Ran by Smith. Well, Hans Diemer mentioned that to you as you went into the locker room. They they don't have a guy that's uh, as fast as Smith that can guard him. Peddington with the extra point, and it's good again. He's two for two on extra points. The more along this game goes on, the more those extra points are very important in this ball game. Because I think this is going to go down the wire. It's now 31-14. to 14. Louisiana Swashbuck was up two. But you know these two squads. Very good defense. Sometimes the offense sputters at moments. But if they start like they did right now, we have a ball game on our hands. Hans Diemer has got a helmet problem. And he's literally at the end of the end zone. Asking... Asking uh, somebody from the Alaska Wild, we need this helmet fixed. Hopefully it's not Keith Smith. Not too sure who that was, but Hans Diemer, jack of all trades, obviously. Last drive, three plays, 34 yards, two minutes and 12 seconds. Good drive for the last Wild when it started off and shambled as E.J. Nima took a knee out for the bad snap. Now they're looking solid right now. Okay, look out. Sammy Knight now this time is back to return it, but Pennington's kick goes out of bounds, so... Louisiana will start right at midfield at the 25-yard line. Well, we talked about it. You know, they average 74.5 points a game, Louisiana, so holding them to 31 at halftime, it's like on their way to 62, well <laughs> well below their average. Exactly right. Well below their average, but not a bad average by any means. Alaska Wild only scoring one time over 69 points. That was against the Fairbanks Grizzlies. That wasn't even close when that second week. All right. Alvi Barty. A lineup under center this time. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. First and ten. They're going to hand it off. Going right side and only a two-yard pickup for Rudy Johnson. Rudy Johnson, one of those big scat backs they have in Louisiana Washbuckers team, just like Duhon, does a very good job finding a little bit of space and find something out of nothing, pick up about maybe one or two. But George Noga doing a very good job. Joe Small in on that tackle. And Harsh Donnie Delaney. Looking at the scores for Louisiana Swashbucklers, first week of the year, 63 to 7. Talk about how good the defense is. They showed it right there in the first week. Barty from shotgun fires across the middle. Ooh, Sammy Knight could not hold on. Pass was a little behind him, but he was open. And then look at the other scores: 89 to 26, the second week of the Katie Rough Riders; 63 to 17, 80 to 45, 82 to 21, and 70 to 24. Man, when you put 89 on the board, next step is only go to 100. Jeez. I mean, you can never see that in a football game, even in AFL. But tell you one thing: a lot of people think this is just as good as an AFL squad even though they're down about two grades at the IFL level. Okay, third down. They need nine. Marty from shotgun. Fires. Got a man wide open. He got the first down. And brought down near the 13-yard line. 
Brought down hard out there by Demarcus James, but not before Henry Hunter makes his first catch of the afternoon and picks up the first down. The model for the Alaska Wild defensive back crew and that jack back position, one and done, meaning one tackle and you're done. So I have a group of it, wrap up, throw them down around the Sullivan Arena turf, and Demarcus James was one fit on that one. The good wrap and the good throw. Okay, they can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Ball marked just outside the 10-yard line. From under center, they'll keep it. They'll go back to the ground again, and Rudy Johnson picks up about five yards. Rudy Johnson has two plays in this series. Look like they're trying to loosen up the heart of the defense, seeing what they're going to do right up the middle. Maybe going to see if they get two or three little up the middle, and then something right across the pattern. Look for that big tight end they got, Hendricks. See if he can find himself wide open in the end zone. Yeah, they've only tried to throw that one pass to him that one time. He's a big target. Yeah. And red zone opportunity, you might want to look for him. They vacate the left side. Interesting here. Marty under center, but he wants to pass. Drops back. Fires got a uh, man. No, stripped of the ball. No touchdown. Nice strip out there by Demarcus James. We talked about vacating the wide side of the field right there and that's what they did. Louisiana Swatch Sucker started with trips to the weak side and then all of a sudden every receiver sprinted to the left looking to find some space on one-on-one coverage but DeMarcus James did a very good job getting the ball on it the top, tipping it away for the intended receiver. Yeah, they wanted to go to Hunter again. Third down now. Oh, Barty lost the football and dives on top of it. Golden opportunity lost to the Alaska Wild right there. Barty fumbles it, throws it right down to the sole of the turf. Two or three. Wild had a chance of that one, just couldn't come up with the pigskin. Boy, that was close. Remember, Alaska Wild leads the league in turnover margin at plus 20. Already had a fumble recovery on the opening kickoff here. Well, fourth down now. And are they going to? No, they're not going to go for the field goal. They got that much confidence in their offense. They're going for the six and the touchdown. Kind of slapping the face to Alaska Wild defense and saying, hey, we can get it right now. Marty scrambles, throws, and incomplete. The Marcus James in on the coverage right there. And a big turnover on down to Alaska Wild. They got a touchdown. They got to have another one here as Alaska Wild creeps in this ball game. As it sits 31 to 14, Swashbuck goes in control. Barty did a very good job buying some time for himself, stepping two or three steps up, firing it, just incomplete. And Demarcus James on some very good coverage along with James Griffin and Dewan Gentry. So we'll break away our first uh, media timeout of the second half. So we'll break away with eight minutes, 50 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Wow, the defense digging in here. Louisiana 31, Alaska Wild 14 on the simulcast, 96.3 FM, The Wolf, and Family Net Television. Victor Goy, owner of Goy Construction in the Valley, is offering affordable homes for all Alaskans. Drive out and see why our Rosemary model in Paradise Lake won the Matsu Home Builders Association 2007 Golden Spike Award. Custom or not, your family will appreciate the many upgrades we build into every home. Call Goy Construction in the Valley today at 373-3032. At Goy Construction, we can do it. If the little things are becoming a workout, call North Star Chiropractic Wellness Center at 33 Spine. That's 337-7463. We missed it. Kelly Thompson, Mark Drake, welcome back. Uh, we miss a play, but uh, Nemeth, Alaska Wild wishes they would have missed this play. It was just broken. Nemeth wanted to hand it off to that back that was coming by him. By the time he got the snap, it was too late. All he was left to do was try to run with it. Thomas Ford set in motion left to his right. Fake off handoff. It looked like it was a fake. I'm not too sure what happened. Broken play all the less, bringing up second and ten for the Alaska Wild. Ball at the six-yard line. Neiman from shot. Got tipped up in the air. And then Neiman just knocks it down. 
smartly there. Wow. E.J. Mills stepped up the pocket, threw it, and then slapped up in the air by, I think it was Buckley. I'm not too sure who got how, a paw on that one. How about, don't tell me it's 32 Buck Harris again. Buck Harris, I think it was on that play. Did a very good job getting a paw on it. Trickled up in the air at 5, 10 feet, and then E.J. Dimmons did the smart thing. Just bat that one away. Third down. And 10. Again, the ball at the Alaska Wild Zone six-yard line. Nemeth, three men to the uh, in motion, or three men, three wide receivers to the left. Fires, uh, has got a man, complete. Out near the 15-yard line, but Markey appears to be just a little bit short of the first down. Just a hair short, maybe two or three inches. Interesting play call coming up here for Hans Diemer. I think you got to go for it, but I think you use E.J. Nemeth right up the middle. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, pushing 290. Three bills. We'll see what he can do. See if he can get his nose over the end, uh, over the goal line. See if he can get a first down for the Alaska Wild. All right. They need a long yard. Nemeth will line up under center. He's got Harris as a fullback right behind him. You're right. They're going to try the quarterback sneak it. And I don't know. I didn't see much forward movement. Remember, they got the nose tackle. Paul jo- John Paul Jones is 315 pounds. They got to move him out of the way. And I, I don't think a, our center can do it. We need, like, a, a bulldozer to move that guy out of the way. And it was weird. The sidelines official just signaled it really early. Didn't even give him a chance to check it or measure it. He just signaled it. First down another way. Interesting play call there. But I think it was the right play call, and I think it was pretty close. I think it was closer than they expected. DJ Nemeth trots down to the sidelines and just grinned. Not pleased with that one at all. I'm a little surprised they at least mark it up. Marty back under center. Flags flies. He hands it off. This is Kirk Duhon on a sweep to the right side. Louisiana's tried a little bit to run the ball in the uh-huh. last a while to no, and I mean no success this afternoon. Duhon's one of those guys that's flashy. Got a nice little speed out of Lake Charles, Louisiana. Well, that's going to add to that rushing total for the last for a while right there. Illegal defense again. The second, the, actually a third call tonight. Illegal defense call for the last for a while. We struggle with that penalty, don't we? That illegal defense. Okay, first and ten. Barty drops back from under center. Quick throw out to his left. Marcus Wildridge on the catch and then a flag is thrown at the end of this and this might be an unsportsmanlike perhaps on James Griffin or Donnie Delaney, Donnie Delaney is looking at Abe Hernandez and saying the same thing, use your head, use your head as he trots to the bench and Antonio Alicia will trot back onto the field name we have not said a lot of is Antonio Alicia, one of those guys that plays a multitude position but he's been held in check early on in this contest 6.34 remaining in the third quarter. Louisiana 31 and the Alaska Wild 14. And Louisiana threatening now with that penalty. Gives them the ball at the two-yard line. First and goal. Penalties kill and they're showing it right there. Bringing up first and goal for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Poised to improve on this 31-14 lead. Alvy Barty. Two receivers right, one left. It's going to hand it off. Trying to sweep left. Nothing there for Kurt Duhon. Kurt Duhon comes into this game. Five games total. Averaging 3.2. Looking for his fifth touchdown on that one. But Joe Small did a very good job cutting down the line. And taking Duhon down to the Sullivan Arena turf. Bringing up second and I would say three or four, Kelly. For the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Okay, Duhon. The Wild saying, you can't run on us. You're going to have to try to pass, and they do, and the Wild knocks the pass down. Trying to get it to Marcus Wilridge at the goal line, but it was knocked away. James on the covers there for the last Wild. Bartia three-step drop, firing to the tender receiver, but Marcus James all over that one, slapping it around and enthusiastically trying to get this defense for the last Wild fired up. Okay, third down. Louisiana's going backwards, not forward. Movement at the line of scrimmage, and Bam Barty gets hit. Lokini, Lokini jumping off sides right there, and Barty flopping down the Sullivan turf. 
That's obviously an offside penalty on the Alaska Wild. And the official finally gives us the signal, so it's going to be on the Wild. And uh, this all started at the one-yard line where it was first and goal, and now after that penalty, it'll be back to the one-yard line where it's third down and goal. Watch something right here going outside her. Duhon straight up the middle, taking this power. Good defensive line against a very good offensive line. The Hogs will decide this one in 444 mark. Okay, Barty under center. And this might be a delay of game. Delay of game on Louisiana. This game has turned into penalties on this drive. I feel like we've had 10 in the last three minutes. The Zebras have seen more action than most of the quarterbacks out there. Okay, now the ball sits just inside the five-yard line. Remember, he remains third down. Fake the hand off. Barty slips down. He's it, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by the Alaska Wilds. Barty slipped down around the Silverina turf, kind of twisted his ankle as his... He lost his shoe. Lost his shoe. Barty lost his shoe. As he was falling down, just kind of heaves it, trying to be a Brett Farr type of movement, just kind of throws it up, and Juwan Gentry just played Johnny on the spot and almost dropped it. Comes away with his second INT of the season. And a huge turnover on downs for the Alaska Wild. Barty literally came out of his shoe when he scrambled. And he kept his head down because he knew that was a bad decision. He literally underhanded the pass. We've seen that a couple times from Brett Favre. One of the greatest quarterbacks in the history of the NFL. I don't think Barty's card that elusive and that. I don't know, what would you say? Swashbuckler type of guy to get that one off. But nonetheless, good opportunity for Alaska Wild to creep back in this, sitting down 31-14. to we got a timeout on the field, so we'll break away. 4.24 remaining here in the third. Louisiana 31 and the Alaska Wild 14. Things are getting interesting on Mother's Day at the Sullivan Arena. Don't you dare go anywhere. For the last decade, Holland Roofing has had the privilege to offer quality products and quality workmanship to our many satisfied customers. Our priority is to do each job safely, efficiently, and of the highest quality. Our certified installers take pride in their work, and our professional staff provides excellent customer service. Call 344-9911 or visit our website for your free estimate, and you will see firsthand the Holland's difference. Holland Roofing. Quality, safety, service you can count on. Kelly Thompson, Mark Drake, A.J. Nemeth uh, had no one open again, Mark. Uh, pressure, pressure, and pressure. He keeps mounting for the Alaska Wild, and especially E.J. Nemeth, front line for the Louisiana Swashbucklers, been dominant to say the least. Second down now in 10. Defenses, wow, they come out and play for the Alaska Wild. They have not allowed Louisiana to score here in the second half. Pass across the middle, and a huge hit. Put on Keith Smith. Man, he was leveled by Warren St. Junius. And he's uh, slow in getting up. Looks like a shoulder injury there for Thomas Ford. If you are, are weak stomach at home, don't watch this replay. Oh. Ouch. Thomas Ford, kind of the heart and soul of this Alaska Wild squad. Looked like of the 
E.J. Nemeth's pass was a little bit behind. Thomas Ford had it in and out of the hands, but paid for it. Man, what a hit put on there. Louisiana Swashbuckers came in as that M.O. was how hard they hit. I think they lived up to the billing on that one. Thomas Ford, 5'9", 190 from Linfield College. Last year was an IFL All-Star. To lose him, it looks like we are going to lose him for the remainder of the game on the Silverina turf. That's tough for the Alaska Wild to come back from. This is our second season of doing games, but that's I, that's you that, agree that's the hardest hit I think I've seen. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. That's about as good as they come. It's good our owners, our new owner now is a doctor, but <laughs> he, he's an oral surgeon. Oral no. surgeon. Maybe the hit needed to be a little higher. Ah, the the, the applause. Our television audience can see is for Thomas Ford. He's up. Maybe he's just winded, but boy, he deserves a little breather if I've ever seen one. Okay, so third down now for the Wild from their own eight-yard line. Clock running. It's in a fast third quarter, 312 remaining in it. Even with all those penalties we've had throughout the third. Nemeth will be in shotgun. Takes the snap from his own two. Throwing steep. Straight down the middle and incomplete. And a flag comes in. A little late flag on that one, but I think it was well deserved. Keith Smith had a couple steps on him. Looked like whoever was the defensive back on that one tripped up Keith Smith and fell down the Sol Arena turf. Brandon Jones going to be called. You be the uh, judge. I go, yes. Kelly, what do you got? I think he tripped on his his own. I don't think they got tangled up. I don't know. I'll have to see it again. The verdict's still out there, but Kelly goes, no, I say yes. We'll see who's a fair weather fan before the end of it. <laughs> You know, a lot of times, it's not a bad move of a defensive back if you get beat to take the penalty. Just yeah. make sure he doesn't catch the ball. Because, look, all it did was give Alaska Wild a first down, but just moved it about 10 yards forward. Very good point, Kelly. It is a first down, but the whole scheme of things, okay, if you're beat and the throw's on time, I mean, Keith Smith has his third touchdown of the night. Keith, speaking of Keith Smith, he's a quarterback now. it has got a man. Throws it out here to the right. This is Curtis Curtis Morrow, number 45. He's a new addition to the team. Exactly right. He hadn't played a lot. He's been there throughout, but he hadn't played a lot this season. One of those guys is kind of a role player for the last while. Seems like E.J. Nemeth was a little bit hurt from a falling play where his tended receiver was Keith Smith. Now Keith Smith goes to the quarterback position. Just throws a strike to Curtis Morrow. Bring up second and about four or five for the last wild. Well, these two high-powered offense, only one score. That was an Alaska Wild touchdown. has been scored here in the second half. Here's Smith going deep for Smith. Cut it. Touchdown. Andre Velasquez goes up and catches that one. It gives a little scoot to the fans. The Salvadorina faithful. And we got a ball game on our hands. Alaska Wild inching ever so close to knotting this one up. Andre Velasquez on that play. I don't know if the pass was as good as the job by the attendant receiver. Andre just did a very good job finding size and just going up and getting using his vertical and coming down with a six. And another big touchdown for the Alaska Wild, setting up 31 to 20. Alaska Wild still down, but creeping back in this one. Pennington, who has been two for two on extra points, Nyan Taylor to hold it. And it's good. Boy, Pennington. Boy, he's been practicing, man. Money in the bank. Money in the bank. He's he's been nailing the extra points here this afternoon. Well, two touchdowns now by the Alaska Wild. And they've held the high-octane Louisiana Swashbucklers to nothing here in the third quarter. And there's only one one minute, 48 seconds left in the third. We talked about the Alaska Wild being a very good third-quarter team. They're living up to the billing. Already two touchdowns in this one. 
with 148 still left to play in the third as they sit down. Only 10, 31 to 21. Best game we've had all year, though. Yeah. Kelly, don't you got to believe that oh, one? Yeah. Nice little crowd on Mother's Day. One, two, they're into it. And three, this is a very good game. Last drive, four plays, 40 yards. Time of possessions, 206. And it was all Key Smith hitting Andre Velasquez for his first touchdown of the night. Sammy Knight and McCray back deep. It's McCray in the end zone. Oh, slipped down as he crossed the five. Well, I can definitely see the momentum is Mr. Momentum's definitely switched over to the Alaska Wild bench. Exactly right, Kelly. Now you gotta watch Sammy Knight. He took the momentum in the first half of action. See if he could take it again after he turned that one for the touchdown. Sammy Knight gets on the board again. I think we're at it's another change of momentum shift again, but Andre Velasquez can't go up again. Going up and catching it, bringing down the six for the Alaska Wild, setting up 31 to 21, 132 left in third. Still a two score game. Important to stop him again. Barty back to pass from his own end zone. Short little pass, Ooh. no gain. Maybe even lost some yardage. The simple toss out there to Henry Hunter. But Mal Tozzi snipped that one out and threw him down. The big 6'5", uh, East High product, did a very good job. Pass was nice and thing, looking like a two or three yard game, but there was big Mal Tozzi. Basketball player, football player, he can do it all. What looked like a two or three yard gain ended up to be a three yard loss. Second down and 13. Barty drops back in his own end zone, fires across the middle and could not hold on as Marcus Wildridge. The intended receiver. Demarcus James and Dewan Gentry. Boy, they they own that defensive backfield along with James Griffin, don't they? I haven't seen two better defense going in action in two years I've been covering the last couple of I think the defense is solid for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. And even better, the secondary for the last couple of Dewan Gentry, Demarcus James, Donnie Delaney, and, of course, James Griffin, the new addition in this year's squad. Crowd, chance defense. Seconds remaining, third quarter. Playcock looked like it went down to zero. And I think just before that was going to go down to zero, they took a timeout. We'll keep it right here with just 3.9 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Wow, what a... Turn of the tide. Well, yeah, what a change of events. It was 31 to 7 at halftime. We talked about a lot of new things for the Alaska Wild. Well, it's a new squad out there, right? Coming out of that halftime speech by Hans Diemer. Had to be fired up there in the Sullivan Arena locker room talking about this matchup. The biggest game in Alaska Wild history. Louisiana Swashbucklers come in undefeated and IFL champs. Gets the 4 and 2 Alaska Wild. Defense is solid both sides of the ball. Offense kind of sputtering both sides, I think, Kelly. But you know what? This has been a one way of a game. Yeah, it's. I think the offenses have sputtered because they're going up against the tough Exactly defense. right. I think they've lived up to the billing in that aspect of the thing. As Nima sets up, sees he can go back in one. Looks like he's going to trot back on the field next time in Alaska Wild get an opportunity for the offense to get on the field in the Sullivan Arena. Okay, last play of the third quarter. Barty drops back from the pocket. has got a man, and it's complete out here to you-know-who, Sammy Knight. Knight loses a glove and still going. He might go all the way and does. No way. Man, he lost a glove on the play. Sammy Knight. Shifty. Dance left, dance right. Didn't matter. No one could catch him. He went back to the house, but there is a player down. I don't know if that's the quarterback, Barty, but he is in pain. Take another look at that one. He's a human highlight reel, Sammy Knight. Remember the kickoff return he had. He went almost down to one knee. There you see his glove came off. That was his glove. Like he a, scores. Like a cat in the field. Take another look at that one as Barty sits down on the Solverina turf. This could be bad news for Louisiana Swashbucklers. 
because you knew who was their backup last year. Alaska Wild's own Key Smith. So I wonder who's going to trot on the field as a QB for the Louisiana Swags Buckles this go around. They're still looking at, is it Barty for sure? You, you would think that's about the place that he, unlo- yeah, it is. Alvin Barty, about the time where he unloaded the pass. Well, he gets, they help him up. And uh, he'll walk to the bench under his own power. Barty's a battler. 47-yard pitch and catch combo. Sammy Knight's fourth touchdown of the evening. Wow, what a night for him. And what a night, what a highlight that was. Dance left, dance right, it didn't matter. No one's going to catch that one. Well, Alaska Wild, they were one play away from shutting out Louisiana for scoring (laughs) in the third quarter. but Not so much. Not on that last play. Sharif. No good on the extra point. Don't say that much. I bet not. wonder if he's missed any all year. Hey, that's the end of the third quarter. We'll break away. What a special game on Mother's Day here. 37-21 now our score. 96.3 FM, the Wolf, and Family Net Television. Have you taken your visitors to Denali? Have they seen a bear? I'll bet they've never had a reindeer omelet. Well, now there's one last place to see Gwynny's Old Alaskan Restaurant. At Gwynny's, enjoy our sizzling New York steak. Mmm, Or how about Alaskan king crab? Gwynny's, where our portions are as big as our heart. Enjoy our friendly pub for an after-work refreshment or just to meet up with old friends. Gwynny's Old Alaskan Restaurant, a favorite Alaskan landmark for over 30 years. Come taste Alaska. Kelly Kelly Thompson, Mark Drake, back as we get ready to start the fourth quarter. 37-21, Louisiana. Wild came in, remember, four and two. Third place in the IFL. With definite, strong playoff possibilities. Sharif Sahir to kick it off and it's uh, Gentry in the old goal line five goes to the right ten breaks a tackle leaps over a defender and goes down finally at the 22 so the Alaska Wild offense will take over for the first time here in the fourth quarter talked about the momentum shift and it's back to Louisiana Swashbuckers way yeah Thanks to that one guy, Sammy Knights, Knights just killed us. He's killed us today. Don't know his official site, si- official receiving yards for the night, but he's been the one-man band. Louisiana Swashbucklers all night long. Okay, Keith, Keith Smith's at uh, qu- quarterback. Shotgun formation. Takes it, fires, under throw, incomplete. Intended for Thomas Ford. Look at the third quarter stats. Louisiana Swashbuckler sit 15 for 29. Total yards of 119 through the air. A.K. Wild 13 for 29 for 172. Ironically, Alaska Wild put up two TDs in that one. Sammy, Sammy Knight has six catches for 115 yards and three touchdowns. Oh, bad snap. Smith got a lucky bounce on from the shotgun. Rolls back and actually completes it. I think it's Gary Harris on the catch. Gary Harris is a very good job finding something out of nothing. Keith Smith 
bobbles it and finds his attended receiver, Gary Harris. He rumbles up the sidelines to pick up about three or four, bringing up third and about seven for the Alaska Wild. Big drive here, obviously, for the Alaska Wild. They want to answer back from that incredible touchdown catch and run by Sammy Knight. Keith Smith at quarterback, takes the snap, drops back. Uh Uh-oh, no one open. He's going to scramble, goes all the way back in his own goal line. He's just going to get rid of it and throws it way, and I mean way up in the stands to avoid the safety. Did a very good job just throwing that one away, but, man, he was back to the end zone. He had no time at all. Looking at that front line for the Alaska Wild, doing a pretty good job, but you got to understand Louisiana Swashbucklers is the best in the league at that front line position. You got a couple guys that are about 6'4, six, 6'5, six, screaming off the ends. Tough to get anybody down. Boy, it took a long time for the officials to throw the intentional grounding flag. And boy, I'll tell you, the Louisiana coach, he was adamant, adamant about how can that not be intentional grounding? And you got to kind of agree with him. Yeah. Even though it's 25 yards backwards, he's still not out of that technical box. Fourth down facing the Wild here. Boy, they need a big need, play. Yeah. It's, ball sits at their own 21. They need 10 yards for a first. Three receivers to the left. Smith pumps. Going deep in the end zone and tipped in the end zone incomplete. And caught by a fan. That could have been a, a catch for the Alaska Wild. He might be enemy number one now as Man. the Bluebirds are in full force. It, remem- it resembles Wrigley Field. What was that poor uh, fan's name? Uh, I know. <laughs> Taking another look at that one, Andre Velasquez was set up, up in the air, and then the, the fan plays the best defense of the house. Oh, that's Bartman. Remember the fan Bartman at the cup yeah. game? <laughs> They're all over him. Guy can't buy a break. Did he lose his shoe as well? Everybody's been losing shoes, gloves everywhere. Okay. Boy, that was heartbreaking. Louisiana takes over on downs, and they hand it off. Willridge on the carry, picks up. Two yards takes it to the 19 yard line. Well, it started on the left and went to the right, set in motion. Nice little handoff, nice little pickup for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. About about two or three, setting up second and eight for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Marte, tough one, back in there for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. That's right. He had went down on that long touchdown pass play. Second down and eight. Vardy under center. Changing the play on the fly here. Now they're approaching. I was thinking, man, yeah. they, they better get this snap off because they're approaching delay a game. I got a little scared there. The offense coordinator saw something. He yelled at the quarterback, hey, slow it down, slow it down. But nonetheless, flag on the play. I'll be it's Louisiana Swashbucklers. The ball set down at the 23. Second down and 13 after the three yard penalty. Barty drops back. He's going to heave it in the end zone, and absolutely no one there but cheerleaders, and they even moved out of the way. They ain't going to play that game. We talked about how high scoring this fair was going to be. Well, it hadn't lived up to the billing in that one, but it's been entertaining in every second of the ball game. Oh, it has. The cheerleaders for the Alaska Wild, they were the closest receivers to that last pass. It missed everyone. Okay, third down now in 13. Marty drops back, fires, and underthrown as he was going across the middle. 
Oh, they, are, they are coming after party, aren't they? <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the 49th state. The last frontier has not been nice to Barty. As George Noga was at, on that one, Antonio Alicio, they went high and low and just collapsed on him and threw him down violently to the Sullivan Arena turf as Barty's shaking up on that one. As the swashbuckles are set up for an extra point, I mean, excuse me, a field goal opportunity. Well, they're kind of late in deciding it here. Play clock down to 14. They look a little tired. Yeah. They got in, remember, late last night. Four. Four seconds, two, one. They're not going to have this play off. Well, they're going to set the ball. They're going to mark it down at the 20. It's going to be a 40-yard field goal attempt from the right hash mark for Sharif Zahir. And no good. Had the distance just barely. So it ended up in the first row, but off to the right. Another big stop by the Alaska Wild defense. They have to have something right here. Sitting down 37 to 21 in the fourth, nine minutes left. I think it's a must do or die time for the Alaska Wild to put this up on the board. As Thomas Ford trots back on the ball, ball field after that lethal hit. I mean, lethal hit. So after missed uh, field goals, you get the ball at the five yard line. And. We've got our media timeout, so we'll break away. Nine minutes exactly remaining in the game. Our score, Louisiana 37 in the Alaska Wild 21. Alaska's Untamed Radio, the Wolf 96.3 FM, and Family Net Television. Sammy Knight, the human highlight reel. Alaskan made superior logs, simple yet superior. Superior Logs Homes are designed to your specifications and bolt together in hours. We've been manufacturing Alaskan-made pre-cut log packages for homes, cabins, and businesses since 1983, and we provide log siding, too. In Anchorage, call 345-3323 for more information and view more pictures online at www.superiorlogs.com. Alaskan-made Superior Logs, simple yet superior. If you haven't been to the Radio Espresso drive through and Cafe, you're missing out. A warm, relaxing environment where you can enjoy time with your friends and your favorite espresso drink. We select only the finest coffee beans and serve quality, handcrafted beverages and pastries. Our service is prompt yet friendly and personalized, delivered in a genuine, enthusiastic and caring way. Experience coffee in a new way at the Radio Espresso drive through and Cafe on the corner of Northern Lights and Boniface. Keith Smith, <laughs> touchdown! Andre Velasquez, pitch and catch combo, end zone to end zone. He can do it all, can he? He can. He's had a heck of a game. Two touchdowns in the night. One he had to fight for. This one he's just wide open. I think they were going for the all shebang right off the bat. Keith Smith, plenty of time and just wheels and deals it up. And who's there for the bacon? Andre Velasquez, wide open. And you get a little souvenir after that, too. Bring yeah. the kid out in the field. Yeah. Look at that. How excited can you be to be a fan in the front row, get the football, and... Lambo Leap has a new meaning. Yeah. So Lambo. We've had... We've had <laughs> the Bartman comment. Yeah, yeah. But Favre, we've had them all tonight. Peddington, he's made all of his extra points tonight. Ooh. That had a change of timing <laughs> there as Taylor was just a half a second late in normally what he puts that down, but Pennington had to hesitate for a moment and then kick, he kicked it through the upright. Ryan Taylor had a little bit of trouble with the snap. He kind of fumbled a little bit. And then Pennington was doing his usual three steps and then kick, came up to it and then put it down and popped it in. We got a ball game on Harris. 37 to 28, 8 53 in the fourth. Man, back and forth action right here at the Sullivan Arena on Mother's Day. Doesn't take long to figure out the last drive. It was just the one heave of the bomb of 46 yards. Surprised it took 27 seconds. I know. 
Okay, it's a nine-point game, 37-28. Pennington gets ready to kick it off. Kick it away from Sammy Knight. Don't let him touch it. If I was Louisiana, I would just have Sammy Knight be the only guy back there. I'd squib kick this one, or maybe in something for the last little while to make sure they don't touch it. Well, there he is. Sammy Knight at the 5. 10. Finds the seam. Got the block at the 20. Ooh. And then it goes down. And to make sure he's down, <laughs> about three extra... Alaska Wild, including Pennington, the kicker, jumped on top of him. Joseph Hobley, defensive end for the Alaska Wild, coming up a little gingerly on that one. He limps to the sidelines, but Sammy Knight, left or right, doesn't matter, man. He just sees the seam and just kind of dances towards it. Mind you, Barry Sanders type, you know, left and right, left and right, and all of a sudden he'll find something, and then boom, he's gone. Okay, shotgun this time for Alvy Barty, their quarterback. Ball thrown 22, drops the snap, picks it up, and throws it out to Sammy Knight, and Sammy gets nailed. Demarcus James on that one. Knight the catch, and then Demarcus James said, hello, welcome to the last frontier. Throwing him down with 8.08 eight left in this ball game. Pickup of just two yards, so it's second down and eight. Crowd, they've been chanting that a lot this afternoon. Defense. And the defense for the Alaska Wild has responded. Marty back to pass and has got a man. Making the catch, Sean Piper. Very close to the first down. I think he's got it just where, just barely has it. Yeah, and they're signaling first down. Barty, a three or four step drop, sets his feet and fires. I think what the Louisiana Swashbuckers do, the big difference between offense and the Alaska Wild and the Swashbuckers, is the timing has been right on for Louisiana, don't you feel? Yeah. I mean, just boom, they turn around, the ball's there. And unlike Louisiana Swat, I mean, the Alaska Wild, they have trouble with that. Barty back to pass. Ooh, this one's a little high. Tended receiver, Marcus Wildred. I mean, I'd like to see. Obvious league champions from last year. Yeah. How many players are back this year from last year's team? It, it's around 10. It's really? around 10 or 11. Um, it depends on the reserve. You count those. It's around 10 or 11 guys. Of course, that Louisiana um, receiving core is a little bit different. You know, those big receivers they had last year. I remember one of them was Moore. Had a couple of tryouts in the AFL, that big size, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, frame. And then, of course, you got Keith Smith now with the Alaska Wild. Second down and 10. Barty steps up, fires, got uh, Sammy Knight again. And Knight stopped near the nine-yard line. Short of the first down, looks like by about two yards. We talked about being on that right place at the right time. Sammy Knight seems to be in the right page as, of course, Barty. It seems like every time he steps back and he's wheeling a little bit, Sammy Knight knows where to get open at and hits him right in stride. That was just like... His, a quarterback knowing his receiver and the receiver uh-huh. knowing the quarterback because it was kind of a busted play a little bit and Knight knew how to just stop and do a quick hook and Barty fired it right on the money timeout taken by the Alaska Wild so we'll break away 5.55 remaining so Wild one on Mother's Day 37-28 Louisiana we'll be back after this Are you looking for wholesome reading materials for you and your family? Do you need unique and encouraging gift ideas? Located on the Palmer Wasilla Highway by beautiful Wasilla Lake, Shalom, Christian Books, and Gifts offers a wide range of inspirational books and gift items. Come visit us for the Bibles and books you know us for and discover our selection of artwork, DVDs, clothing, candles, music, life of faith dolls and books, individual and box cards, and more. We hope to see you soon at Shalom. 
Dr. Jerry Prevo invites you to the Anchorage Baptist Temple Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. to celebrate Baby Dedication Day. You don't have to be a member to have your baby dedicated, so bring your baby age one year and under to the Anchorage Baptist Temple Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. Every baby dedicated will receive a special gift from Dr. Jerry Prevo. That's Baby Dedication Day, Sunday, June 1st at 11 a.m. at the Anchorage Baptist Temple, 6401 East Northern Lights. Phone 333-6535 for more information. Welcome back. Uh, Louisiana handed it off to Kurt Duhon, who actually found some yardage. He's picked up the first down, but a flag was on the play as well. Here our television audience gets to see it. It was just a simple handoff up the middle. And Duhon hopped across the five, really went all the way down to the two. And unfortunately, the penalty is going to be on the Alaska Wild. Illegal defense on the Alaska Wild. Heard that, seen that play call a lot. Oh, we could... We could and it's a battle. It's five yards. I mean, usually you see the three-yard penalties don't yeah, add up too much. Yeah. But five yards ekes away at you. Wow. Well, the defense literally has their back up against the wall here. First and goal. Ball at the two-yard line. Barty under center. And all kinds of movement here. Big number 60, Lokini, Lokini jumping over on that one. A flag on the play, and they're going to mark that one off. False start on the losing hands for Washington. I tell you one thing, if the last while get a stop here, it's a different ball game. Huge possession. Defensive possession for the last while. As Antonio Alicio sets in the middle linebacker position alongside Joe Small. Right at nose guard, the big IFL all-star. Lokini, Lokini Jr. And to his left, George Nogan. To his right, Mal Tozzi. Party in the center. Going to try to pass it. Fires. Incomplete. Underthrown to Sammy Knight. Second down upcoming. Sammy Knight about a five-yard pass play on that one. Just turn around and see if he can find catch inside some space. But it falls to the Sullivan Arena turf and the Bucks will go to second down on this one. James Griffin on the defense on that one. Just kind of diving towards the ball. Pretty good coverage right there. Bringing up second and goal from about the five for the Louisiana Swashbucklers. As Joseph Hobley steps back in the ball game at the defensive end position for the Glasgow Wild. Okay, we have another timeout. Let's break away quickly as well. 4.24 remaining. The Swashbucklers take time. They lead by nine. Coming down to the wire at the Sullivan Arena. Glad to have you along. The doctor told us we had a 1% chance of conceiving naturally. We tried a couple of uh, infertility treatments and went through our first month and nothing happened. Went through our second month, nothing happened. And one Saturday night we were sitting at home and the phone rang. It was a friend of ours. He just said, there's a girl in my youth ministry who is pregnant. She wants to give her baby up for adoption and I can't get you guys out of my mind. The nurse turned to Emily and said, who do you want to hold him? And she said, Leslie. So they put him in my arms for the first time. And as they put him in my arms, I was just looking at him thinking, you're so lucky you don't have my genes. <laughs> What's amazing is um, he doesn't look anything like me. And when people will go, he looks just like his daddy. Well, Jake is now four. Almost five. Almost five. We knew we'd like being parents. I didn't realize how much he would make me laugh. I can't uh, imagine loving a child anymore just because he is from your own flesh. Second and goal from the five as a quick pitch to Kurt Duhon, and he had nowhere to run. Take another look at that one. Duhon, a little pitch, trying to get outside. Joseph Hobley doing a very good job getting held, by the way. And then, of course, Joe Small, the middle linebacker position, throwing him down to the Sullivan Arena turf for the big loss, bringing up third and goal. And I tell you one thing, Joe Small and that interior defense for the last while has been stellar top to bottom. 
and taking a media timeout, but these officials and uh, their watches down there, we're not going to dare break away right now, so we'll keep it right here. Four minutes remaining, Louisiana leading it 37 to 28. Everyone having fun at uh, Sullivan Arena. <laughs> Rushing yards on the night. Swashbucklers hit 8 for 15. Alaska Wild 10 for minus 26, but we all know where that minus 26 comes. The loss of about, how many yards was it? About 26 or 27 yard loss yeah. on one play. Okay, yeah. They sit down 37 to 28. Alaska Wild with the four minute mark. I don't think the, I'm trying to remember, have we even tried to run the ball one play in the second half? I, um, we had a quarterback draw, remember, and then okay. EJ Nemeth got hurt. Okay, third down now and goal. Ball at the six yard line. Barty under center, now drops back, fires, got a man. Uh, touchdown. Guess who? Sammy Knight. Sammy Knight. Sammy Knight. He's not very big, but, man, he can find some space and fill it very quickly. Good pitch and catch combo. And you can hear, just feel it. Oh, out of the Sullivan Arena crowd, 37 and adding. That was a pitch and catch combo. That was a flat-out strike, wasn't it? It was. Well, he's obviously the player of the game. Boy, if the washbucklers com- continue, you might look at him at player of the year. I know. Got to say that one. MVP, perhaps. Barty is at a solid one as well. Sharif's extra point is blocked. Remember, you can return this. Joe Small tries, and Sharif pushes him out of bounds. And Zaire and Joseph Small. Zaire might go 5 8 in a good day. And Joseph Fall, Small is about 6'4", 6'5", 285. Take another look at that. Zaire off the corner. Joe, who is that one? I couldn't get the name on that one. But I'll tell you one thing, Joe Small picked it up and almost brought it back to the house. That would have been a huge change of tide on that one. I don't know who's going to be credited for that block, but screaming in there, getting a paw on it and put it down to the sole from the turf. 358 left, 43 to 28. Alaska Wild still behind in this one, but a great ball game we have for Sol Green on Mother's Day. All right, Louisiana to kick it off. A six-game home winning streak for the Alaska Wilds dating back to last season is on the line here today. Whoever paid a mission on this one got their money's worth because it was been a dandy of a ball game. And I tell you one thing, I don't think the two weeks of all the distractions that bothered Alaska Wild one bit. The last drive, eight plays, which is a lot in indoor football, 35 yards, and they wanted to eat up a lot of the clock, which they ate up three minutes and 41 seconds of it did Louisiana. Very good job on that play. Opportunity for the Alaska Wild to make a big-time stop, and they couldn't come up with it. They here to kick it. Good boot. And this is Demarcus James. 10, 15, near sideline 20. Cuts back and takes it into Louisiana territory. Push down hard at the 23. If there was ever a time for Demarcus James to put one back to the house, that was it. Had an opening, just couldn't come home with it. Followed his blockers, was very patient. Almost tripped up. And then James Griffin, his fellow teammate, kind of knocked him down to the Sylvania turf. We got first and ten for the Alaska Wild. With 3.51 left, down 43 to 28. Score quick here and see if you get a turnover. You got to. Yeah, you got it. You got to. Score as soon as possible. As EJ Namath will sit on the bench again for the Alaska Wild, as Keith Smith, kind of the backup quarterback, steps to the line for the Alaska Wild. Taylor, this offensive specialist in motion, heads downfield. They're looking for him. Picked off at the goal line. Intercepted by Brandon Thomas, and then he pitches it to Damian Huron. And Huron takes it another 15 or 20 yards all the way down to the 11-yard line, and 
Hurian uh, is the acting award winner on Louisiana. Won that one and just under thrown, I guess it was, Mark. Yeah, Keith Smith, I don't think he even saw him. Sitting up there playing defensive back and didn't even see him. Keith Smith shakes his head, can't believe it. And that could be it. 43 to 28, three minutes left, left for the Alaska Wild to salvage this ball game, but I don't think it's going to happen. Okay, Louisiana. See if they keep it on the ground and try to eat up some clock here. They do drop back to pass and it's picked off. Intercepted by James Griffin. And Griffin loses his helmet and goes down at the four. Well, I'll take back what I said. We're back at square one. Boy, Louisiana, I thought they might try to keep it on the ground, hand it off a couple of times, but uh, they went for the pass and Griffin made them pay for it. Griffin picking up another INT on the season. Does a very good job in that defensive back position. Sits is now his sixth INT of the season, second in the IFL altogether. So, at their own five yard line, Wild will take over. From shotgun, Smith takes it, backs up in his own end zone. He's going to heave it deep and tip and caught. Andre again. Velasquez has a, at least his third touchdown. To catch combo. No one expected that one. Man, he got lucky on that one. Tipped around by Louisiana Swashbucklers. And Andre Velasquez played Johnny on the spot, putting six on the board. We got a new ball game, 43 to 34. Well, we said score quick, and they did. But boy, you got to admit, this was sort of lucky. That ball was tipped by Brandon Thomas, number 10, who was trying to tip it down. Instead, he tipped it right into the hands of Andre. Extra point by Pennington. He's been perfect today. Hits another one and makes it an eight-point game, 43-35. to Well, with the two-point conversion... A score and drive. A score and a two-point conversion, we could be tied. Mark well, Kelly Thompson on that side, the man of the hour right now, Andre Velasquez. How'd you catch that one? I think it, I think you're just the right man at the right time. Yeah, I don't know. I saw the ball and I had to go for it. That's what they, that's what they took me out earlier. They said I wasn't going for the ball, so that's one of those things to set the game up. I mean, I see have faith in me, so hell, I got to do it. Exactly right. With 2.10 I mean, left in this ball game, down 43 to 35, you need another touchdown like that. I'm hoping so. Put it up there. I don't think that DB should cover me. I really don't think so. Back to you, Kelly. All right. Good job, Mark. Andre, definitely out of breath. He should be. He's had three great touchdown catches today. Watch here for an offside kick right here as the Louisiana Swashbucklers line up a little bit closer. There it is, squib kick. Here it is. Oh, and he goes down the field. Look out. There's a race for it. Oh, and Louisiana just got there in time. Oh, boy, I thought we nearly, nearly might come up with that. Good squib kick there by the these high products. Squibbed it down there, hit off this dasher board. Fell right into Louisiana Swashbuckler's hand. And guess who it was? Number 17. The best man on the field tonight, Sammy Knight. Now Tozy clapping his hands. Uh, trying to get the crowd to make some noise here to kind of disrupt Louisiana. Louisiana. Threw an interception the last time they had it. Held to 43 points so far today. And here's a fumble. They fumble the exchange on a handoff. Alaska Wilds got it. 
Big number 55, George Noga, hitting that one and throwing one souvenir to the crowd. His second fumble recovery of the night. Big George Noga, the IFL All-Star. We got some life. 43 to 35, 141 left in the fourth. Would you believe this? Wasn't that long ago. Louisiana, we were wondering if they were just going to hold the ball and run the clock out. Well, George Noga, obviously a big one. I think your second fumble, but they haven't been bigger than that one. Yeah, that's a real big one for us. We need stuff like that, especially with just a minute and a half left. We need all the help we can get on turnovers. Kelly, back to you. Okay, here's Keith Smith, shotgun. Ooh, and it might be offside. Alaska Wild thinks so. We'll see what the referees think. Alaska Wild sideline just erupted on that play. The defense has been solid. The offense has been solid. Now they just got to bring this one home. Can't mention it enough. Louisiana Swashbucklers sit undefeated in the IFL champs. If they can get this one, what a momentum shift after a rough two weeks. Clock, of course, a factor. It's running with 122 left. Smith has Nyan Taylor going in motion. Takes it, pumps, no one open. Ooh, takes the sack. Dropped at the 23-yard line. They're calling for something as the top kicks away. One minute mark coming up right here, 43-35. to 35. E.J. Nemeth still ice in that hand as he sits right there. And Joe Small can't even look at it here on the sidelines. And Hans Diemer will come out and take a timeout. We'll keep it right here, of course, with one minute remaining. And the Alaska Wild trying to come back. Well, Kelly, if this is the best team in the league, IFL defending champs and undefeated, I tell you one thing, this new franchise of Alaska Wild is right up there with it, sitting only down a couple of points, 43 to 35 with a minute to go in this ballgame. Mark, remember what it was at halftime, 31 to 7. We talked about this Alaska Wild squad being a third quarter team, and boy, they lived up to the billing in this one. Look at the trends in the third and fourth. It's been all Alaska Wild, been dominant top to bottom, even if they're on the road. So coming into this ball game, the ethos said, yes, they could come back from that deficit. And they showed it right here, sitting down 43-35 with a minute left on Mother's Day, nonetheless. Television audience getting to see the, the rules, basically the same other than that drop kick. Rules are the same as regular football and scoring, two-point conversion, pass and run. Still looking for that drop kick field goal those are worth four points okay second down 15 for a first but really that's not important the wild needs a touchdown and a two point conversion they have a minute remaining Watch for T. Ford out of the backfield. They kept mentioning his name on the sidelines right here. Watch a little misdirection to see if they can catch something off guard with one minute left. They're going to probably air it out or get something on the ground right here. Maybe get a little closer, but I don't know. A lot of opportunities when you sit at the midway point, only about 25 yards out from the end zone. Of course, Keith Smith is in there for the injured E.J. Nemeth. He still ices his finger. Good opportunity with trips to... Keith Smith's right. Okay, here we go. Nyan Taylor comes around in motion. Goes in motion to the left. Smith fires and has got a man complete. And taking it down near the goal line is Thomas Ford. Down the stop, down around the five. A flag is down. I think they're going to add something to that. I think it's going to be a personal foul after the play. Keith Smith threw, and this got hammered way after that pass was played. And Antonio Alicio playing in short yardage position as he tosses to the line for the Alaska Wild. 52 seconds left. Watch for the big house in the backfield. Antonio Alicio on the backfield right up the middle. Maybe even a little option to play with Thomas Ford. But, boy, what a whale of a game with 52 seconds left down, 43-35. to 35. The other penalty on Louisiana, roughing the passer. Talk about a validation of the rough two weeks we've had here in Alaska Wild. Kelly, I couldn't ask for a better ending to this rough two weeks. 
Of course, your head coach being fired. New ownership. What about a big win right here? Oh, this has got storybook novel written all over it. First and goal. They hand it off. Coming left side. He's in. Touchdown. Thomas Ford. What a play call there by Hans Diemer. Thomas Ford went in motion to his right, then went to the left. Handoff goes to him, and what's he do? Wait, wait, and finds a hole for the end zone. We got a new ball game, 43 to 41. Alaska Wild only down two with 38.12 left on Mother's Day. All right, two point conversion away from tying this game. Hans Diemer has come out. He's already decided what play they're going to run. 43-41. 38 seconds left. Smith under center. Fakes the handoff. They're going to try to go up the middle. And they're going to be stopped. Went with Tony Lolisio in a misdirection. Exactly and Tony right. stopped at the one-yard line. Exactly right on that one. A little bit of misdirection going to Thomas Ford. That same play, just going to the opposite side. Then they went for the big guy, Antonio Alicio, right at the middle. As a round of applause for the Alaska Wild faithful because it's well-deserved. What a ball game we had. 38.1 seconds left. Swashbuckler set 43-41. to 41. No kidding. With all the turmoil that they have experienced this week and to come out here and be down 31 to 7 at halftime and come rallying back and hold a team that averages 74 points a game to 43 43 points one of the swashbucklers players came up to me and goes we don't want more any more of this Alaska Wild squad well he said they have all the respect in the world for this team Okay, remember how close the last onside kick was. Wild will obviously try it again. And it's bounced and recovered by Louisiana at the 11-yard line. Marcus Wildridge, number four, grabbed it. Didn't take that big bounce as it usually does. It went two or three yards. And then, of course, that front line just came down with it. Louisiana Swashbuckles will take over on downs, 43-41, to 41, 36 ticks left. Another flag by the official. It's going to be an unsportsmanlike on the Alaska Wild. And uh, Joe Small, I think, is going to be ejected as well. And it'll be a major penalty as far as indoor football league rules go. Mark it all the way down to the three-yard line as Joe Small will be the first man to get the bar of soap in the shower. Look for something right up the middle. They're bringing the big house for the Louisiana Swashbuckers. All the big guns are in. Maybe a Duhon, just a little handoff and see if he can bring it to the house or... They have enough respect for this Alaska Wild squad. They might just take a knee. 36 seconds remaining. Barty will line up under center. Alaska Wild. Barty takes it up the middle. Stop. Short game. Wild takes a timeout. I'm wondering how many more they have remaining, Mark. Yeah, Barty tried to go right off the middle right there, and he didn't know where to go with on that one. I think they're just going to bring the house right now, and I don't think they're going to do anything besides just outman Alaska Wild man to man with this lead, 43 to 41, with 31 ticks left. I'll see what happens, but Barty's not pretty good size, 6'2", 6'3", and over 240, 245. So it's not a bad bad, bad, bad um, game plan for Louisiana Swashbuckler. Excuse me. Louisiana will stay in Alaska. They'll travel up and play Fairbanks this coming Saturday night.
and uh, the Alaska Wild head on the road for the next two weeks. And Odessa next Saturday, and then on the 24th, they're in Central Texas. Second and goal from the one. just kind of waiting around for the referees. Now they're finally set the ball in play. Bartle fakes the handoff. Soft toss. Oh, he's looking for that big tight end again, and it's incomplete. That's that uh, Jabari Hendricks. Remember him back in the first half? Six foot four, 295 pounds from Michigan State. He makes for a big target, Mark Drake. Zachariah Hendricks is one of those big targets for Barty, they just couldn't find him on that one. Pretty good coverage by Demarcus James out of the backfield. Did a very good job covering up for that linebacker position. As Joseph Hobley was sitting for the suspended Joseph Hobley. Quarterback sneak. Barty this time is in. Touchdown. Swashbuckler. And he fires it against the board. Everybody's taking a look at it, along with the officiated crew. They're saying knee, knee, but I think it's going to stand right here. And that'll probably be your final. Unless the extra point's good, 50 to 41. Well, I don't think it ma- I don't think there's instant replay in indoor football league. Sharif Zahir to try the extra point. Last one was blocked. But misses this one. He's probably used to kicking them more often than he has in the second half. Top to bottom, I mean, four stars for the Alaska Wild, what they've done on this field today in the second half. Top to bottom, the third was great. The fourth was even better. I mean... You got to look at some of the guys that come out here after injuries. You said Keith Smith knocked out that first go around as quarterback. Now he comes out the second go around and he was fabulous. Andre Velasquez, questionably the player of the game, had a whale of a game himself. And of course, Kelly, we'll have Hans Zima right after the show. After this ball game is concluded with 27.7 ticks left, 49 to 41. What a way of the game. A great comeback by the Alaska Wild here in the second half, but the ball a little short. Demarcus James and Andre Velasquez set deep for the Alaska Wild. I foresee a swim kick. By the Louisiana Swashbucklers. Probably not want to get into Marcus James' hand. All right, here we go. Kick low line drive. And taken by Andre. Look out. He's got three touchdowns already. He's got four. Back to the house, Andre Velasquez had a little bit of a wall, had a seam, and took it straight to the house. Boy, can we say it anymore? We got a new ball game. 18.9, six left, 49 to 47. His Sullivan Arena just flat out erupted, and Andre Velasquez just cemented the player of the game award. Boy. I'll tell you, Louisiana's made some interesting decisions here and late in this game. Exactly right, Kelly. I'm talking to the new owner, Dr. Randy Dieter, and he's the most sighted man in the whole world. Hey, this is this is this is great. These guys tend to play with their heart and they've got it all out. They never give up. They never give up. Exactly right, Kelly. I don't know what they're gonna do next. It's probably a little bit of misdirection. Maybe go back to that Thomas Ford play, see if they can put to the house with 18.9 ticks left. Wow, we were just here, weren't we? 
The Alaska Wild two points away from tying it on a two-point conversion. Here we go again. It's a handoff, trying to sweep. Thomas Ford, he gets it, touchdown! Two-point conversion is good! What do we say, Kelly? 49 to 49, we got a different ball game. Thomas Ford set in motion to the right, went left, took the handoff, and as he's done all year, wait for his blockers, he was patient and found a nose for the end zone. Six for the last go on, we got a new ball game. 49 to 49. All right, 18 seconds left to go. The way this is turned around, 18 seconds is is an eternity. And I'm with the man with the hour again, Thomas Ford, just waiting for his blockers, did a great job. How'd you get in there? Well, I just seen Tony, I had a lead, it was 2-1-1, all I had to do was make one guy miss. Zachary Wright, he's done a great job being patient. Last time it was Antonio Alicio not getting it in there. You got it this time. Man, what a back and forth ball game. Absolutely. You know, this is what uh, IFL football is all about. These by far the two best teams in the league. We're showing them tonight. Why? Kelly, back to you. All right. Thanks, Mark. Mark Drake literally down on the sidelines with the Alaska Wild. Okay, Pennington to kick it off. This is McCray deep in the end zone out to the five. 10. Ooh, got a block and stopped near the 17. 12 seconds remaining. Very good job there by Joseph Hobley. Did a very good job taining it. But now it's the secondary's head. See if the last go wild can come up with a big time stop with 12.7 left. Not at a 49 on Mother's Day. If you're wondering about overtime, the overtime rules and overtime period shall consist of a series by each team. Putting the ball in play by a snap at the 25-yard line. If teams are tied after each team has had a possession, the next team to score wins. Okay? That's right out of the IFL 101 rulebook. Here's a double reverse. No, it's a flea flicker. Barty going deep, and it's intercepted in the end zone. Demarcus James intercepts it. The big question now, will they settle for a field goal opportunity with 4.9 seconds left? I'm no interested in where they're going to spot the ball, but it's a good opportunity. you got to go the length of the field. One, you can just throw it up and hope for the best, or go for the field goal opportunity and take a little luck at it. you got 4.9, you probably got all realization. One chance at it. I'm with Curtis Moore, and he can't believe this back and forth contest. Man, that's my that's my brother, the head coach. So you know it's important to me. It's very important to me. That's my old team. You and you and you and Keith Smith, the old yeah. team. So you got to get back up, and you're saying it's the it's the game of the century. Man, it, it is. It's great. We great, man. It's, hey, I can't explain the feeling, bro. Kelly, back up to you from a leading Alaska Wild crew. 80, I would say 80% of the fans are standing right now. Okay, from the five-yard line, remember, probably just one play is all Alaska Wild can have here. Here's Smith, steps up, gets rid of it, and picked off at the 20-yard line. Time has expired, so they better make sure they stop him from going into the end zone. And they don't. And Louisiana scores on the final play of the game. Tell me I didn't see that. Wow, what a play right there. INT, a couple of throws back. But I tell you one thing, Louisiana Swashbucklers weren't celebrating too much. They ran over to the Alaska Wild sidelines and gave a bunch of congratulations. Because it was one whale of a game. I'm going to have to, we'll we'll go with you with Hans Diemer. He's got to be shocked, Mark. And we'll look forward to watching that replay. Back down to Mark Drake with Coach Diemer. Well, Hans, one of those games for the, I don't know, a moment. You had it, didn't have it. You had it, you didn't have it. 
But back and forth, what a whale of a game and one of the best in IFL history. Uh, I definitely think so. I think our guys showed that uh, being down in the first half was nothing to them. And, you know, we came out in the second half. And to tell the two halves, we won the second half. We had that missed slip right there at the end. So I'm really proud of the guys. And this was a win for the IFL record books. One, as just a franchise win. You guys had so much turmoil last the last two weeks to come back from that. Speaks volumes of you and your club. Yeah, they get, you know, it's all about the guys. You know, they did a great job, and uh, we were able to straighten it out at halftime and come out and perform, and uh, I look forward to going to Louisiana. If that's the best team in the league, you guys aren't far off, are you? Uh, I feel pretty good about where we're at, yeah. Kelly, back up to you. Congratulations, Hans. Great game. Wow, what a comeback. What a comeback and on the verge of overtime. And Smith heaving it down the field. The pass was intercepted by Brandon Thomas. Here's an Alaska Wild offensive hero. Let's go back quickly to Mark. Thanks, Kelly. Andre Alaska is one of those games that you look back, what a whale of a game, but on the scoreboard, doesn't read what you want. 55 to 49 loss, but one heck of a game overall. Man. And it's one of those things where you go down to the end, you know what I'm saying? They get a, they get a little lucky interception, they take it back to the house on us. Have you ever seen a game that had so many swings in less than a minute or two? Man, never. That's the first. That's a, that's a pretty big game. I like that. Well, if you like that, obviously you like the score, 55 to 49 loss, but top to bottom, overall, if that's the best team in the league and undefeated, you guys aren't far off. No, we're not far off at all. Actually, you know what? It's just one of those things where who ends up with the ball last and it gets that last little possession wins the game, you know? Well, overall, great game, and Kelly, back up to you for more. All right. Why don't we go to break, and we'll come back and uh, kick off the postgame show and review some highlights. Boy, the game won on Brandon Thomas's interception. And then down around the five-yard line, he was able to pitch it to Travis Moses. And Moses took it in for the score. And Louisiana wins it 55-49. to Back with the postgame show after this. For the last decade, Holland Roofing has had the privilege to offer quality products and quality workmanship to our many satisfied customers. Our priority is to do each job safely, efficiently, and of the highest quality. Our certified installers take pride in their work, and our professional staff provide excellent customer service. Call 344-9911 or visit our website for your free estimate, and you will see firsthand the Holland difference. Holland Roofing. Quality, safety, service you can count on. I think it's just been a lifelong dream of mine to be a, a police officer. It gives you an opportunity to do things that are fun and also help out in the community you live in as well. I wanted to become a police officer uh, primarily because I enjoy helping people. And a police officer, you get to use a lot of those different skills and a lot of those different interests. Are you looking for wholesome reading materials for you and your family? Do you need unique and encouraging gift ideas? Located on the Palmer Wasilla Highway by beautiful Wasilla Lake, Shalom Christian Books and Gifts offers a wide range of inspirational books and gift items. Come visit us for the Bibles and books you know us for and discover our selection of artwork, DVDs, clothing, candles, music, life of faith dolls and books, individual and box cards, and more. We hope to see you soon at Shalom. It's smashing. It's catchy. It'll steal your heart. Anchorage Glacier Pilots quit 50 games in 53 days. Summer 2008 is sure to be a real hit. Check the schedule on GlacierPilots.com that will run from home to Mulcahy Stadium. Best in the nation is five-time collegiate champions of the National Baseball Congress. Games and prizes for kids between every inning. Anchorage Glacier Pilots. The greatest show on dirt.
Victor Goy, owner of Goy Construction in the Valley, is offering affordable homes for all Alaskans. Drive out and see why our Rosemary model in Paradise Lake won the Matsu Home Builders Association 2007 Golden Spike Award. Custom or not, your family will appreciate the many upgrades we build into every home. Call Goy Construction in the Valley today at 373-3032. At Goy Construction, we can do it. Welcome back to the Sullivan Arena, Kelly Thompson, Mark Drake, simulcast 96.3 FM, The Wolf, Alaska's Untamed Radio, Family Net Television, live, both live here this afternoon. This one will go down as a legend. Wow, what a what a game. What a comeback, 55-49. Louisiana wins it. Mark Drake uh, back down to Mark on the field with some more interviews. Well, Coach, victorious, big victory, 55-49, to but you had to work for every penny of it. <laughs> I think we may have a new rivalry. <laughs> Man, he's, you know, uh, hats off to Coach Dima and the organization, new ownership. Uh, and those guys, are, they always play hard. And uh, we knew that coming in. And, uh, you know, we just, the main thing, my, my concern for the last couple of weeks was get, being able to have everybody make the trip. And for the most part, we had like 95% of the roster make it. And I said, you know, going against these guys, you can't go in and have seven. So I'm praying jobs to let guys off so we can make it. <laughs> but uh, And it, it was all that I expected, man. Even when we went up, uh, I think about 28 before the half, I told them it wasn't over in the locker room. And, uh, you know, we know what Keith Smith can do. He played with us last year. And those guys, they really rallied around him. And, you know, you got an inexperienced quarterback. And those receivers did a great job. That defensive line brought pressure to our quarterback all night. And uh, it was just an overall great game. I was telling some fans, man, that's what you pay for. You don't pay for blowouts. You pay for good games. Exactly right. Is Alaska Wild, you played a lot of big games right. last two years. Is Alaska Wild the best team you've seen in the IFL action, at least this year? I can't. I we played, we played quite a few good teams, you know. And, and that's, saying, that's saying a lot about the quality of, of uh, teams in the IFL. But uh, by far this year, that is that is the most uh, you know, overall talented and, and 